up? Welcome to You Missed It, episode 19, the Bob Roberts edition. I'm some jerk-off named Alex, and if you like them apples, I got four more jerk-offs here with me. Jack, what? Zach, Rylan, and Andrew. These fools had to suffer through my pick of a film this week, which was... Bob Roberts! It was great. It was fantastic. It was an excellent film. Everyone loved it. So that's it. Thank you all very much for listening. We'll be back next week with Ryland's pick of a film. And as they said in From Dusk Till Dawn, fuck you, everyone. Good night. (laughs) (laughs) But I suppose if we got to say something about the film, even though everything's been said already. How about this? So when the average person back in 1992, when this film was released, first watched it, they would probably see a talented, somewhat young, uh, well-off folk singer who is running for the U.S. Senate seat in Pennsylvania and the trials and tribulations he has to go through while doing that, especially a reporter named Bugs Raplin who is attempting to expose this hero, Mr. Bob Roberts, who's running for Senate seat. So that is how... The average film make, the average film goer in 1992 might have viewed this film when they first saw it. However, in this day and age, viewed through the eyes of the average millennial and SJW, it might be something like this. <laughs> this film is a giant circle jerk to the one percent. <laughs> it's all about the white. Male privilege. It's also super racist, too, because the only person to die in this film, even though it's off screen, is the black man. Oh, yeah. You yeah. brought props? <laughs> <laughs> I am a prop. He's wearing go- like, goggles right now. What do they say? Which, what do they say SJW. on that? That's, that's yeah. the SJW, SJW on, yeah. on them, so you can't actually see out of them very well. It is a literal sure. lens of an the, SJ through w. which we view life. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, so... Uh, just for our benefit, since no one else can see the ones. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. We appreciate it enough for everyone else. <laughs> So I'm still going to make the case that this film is underrated even for the, the reasons that some some of the younger generation, and I know there are a lot of young people who listen to the, this podcast, they might agree with the millennial SJW point of view, but I'm still going to make the case that it's underrated because I am a 1% filleting uh, white male privilege experiencing racist. So for all you SJWs out there who are just fucking seething with anger please send us hate mail uh you can no. comment on our facebook page <laughs> you can comment on our soundcloud you can send it to me directly yeah some jerk off named alex that's what you want to put in the title and if you really want you were talking about the the mailbox you can send directly to jack's mailbox oh. Um, it's Alex. You want to do it one at a time, a Caucasian severed head. Now, when you send this severed head, you got to do it right. You got to drain all the blood out first. Then you've got to put it into a bag and seal the bag from the top because there's nothing worse than getting a cardboard box in the mail that has blood soaked corners. It, just, it ruins the box. Like, Please be considerate. And, and it kind of ruins the surprise, right? Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. yeah. What's in the box, I know. I mean, yeah, it's not much yeah. of a statement if you kind of know what's coming. So, yeah. yeah. Surprise. Please be thoughtful, people. Yeah. P- please be courteous. Please wrap your severed heads accordingly. That's right. And like your I said, your head. You have to you. cut your own head off <laughs> and send that to me. <laughs> Somehow send your own head to me. Thank you. And Jack will forward it on to me. And I appreciate it. And fuck all you people. <laughs> and, oh, you SJWs, I can feel your anger. Let the hate flow through you. (laughs) Anyway, back to the film. So this film, this is the part of the podcast where I'm going to become the narrator from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. (laughs) So sit back and relax or go somewhere else or pass out. Or take a step to the left. Either it works. Bob Roberts was released on September 4th, 1992. 
do. It was filmed from November 4th to December 10th, 1991. That's a short film production. It is a satirical mockumentary film based on a short segment of the same name and featuring the same character that Robbins portrayed on Saturday Night Live. That is Tim Robbins. The tagline for the film is Vote First, Ask Questions Later. The basic synopsis for the film is a right-wing folk singer becomes a corrupt politician and runs a crooked election campaign. Only one independent muckraking reporter is trying to stop him. You know what? This is boring, so I'm not going to do that anymore. If anyone has any questions about the film, they can ask. For those of you who are still listening, and that's probably like two of you, (laughs) thank you very much. But I will tell you, it stars Tim Robbins. It's also written and directed by Tim Robbins. So I think Tommy Wiseau stole from him a little bit. (laughs) This is the directorial film debut of Tim Robbins. It also stars, is it Giancarlo or Giancarlo? Andrew. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah. Alan Rickman, Ray Wise, Brian Murray, Gore Vidal, Harry Lennox, Tom Atkins, David Strathairn, and Jack Black. And this was Jack Black's first film role with cameos by James Spader, Pamela Reed, Helen Hunt, Peter Gallagher, Susan Sarandon, Fred Ward, Fisher Stevens, John Cusack, Bob Balaban, and Jeremy Piven. I don't know what the budget for the film was, but I do know that it grossed $4.4 million. You can find us on SoundCloud, mainly, slash You Missed It Podcast. You can find us on Facebook at You Missed It. You can find us on iTunes, You Missed It. You can find us on Twitter at YMI underscore podcast. You can find us on YouTube, You Missed It Podcast, and on Instagram at YMI underscore podcast. Anyone have any questions so yes. far about the f- Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I have a lot of questions. Um, oh, is it related to the film or my my delivery so far? No, your delivery just confused me. I have no <laughs> <Yeah>. questions. <laughs> <laughs> I have No, uh, I I I feel like I I I'm missing a lot um okay. here just because uh I I don't know. I I know Bob Dylan's music to a certain extent mm. and some of the po- like some of his background but not a whole hell of a lot. So this was meant to be like a so I'm getting some of it. So I would see some of the videos and I was like, oh, yeah, I recognize that, that they're satirizing, you know, his video here, his, you know, this shot here. This this is iconic. OK, I get that. But I didn't get it at all. So I'm wondering, uh, like, because this came out in 92. Yeah. So I would have been like, I would have been one. So <laughs> when this came out, I would have been one years old. So I don't really so so he's supposed to be Bob Dylan in this movie like so he's supposed to be like a, a satirical take on Bob Dylan I get that but is there any deeper significance to that My theory on it is that this is an alternate world where Bob Dylan never existed and Bob Roberts just comes out of nowhere basically and he takes on the persona of the the folk singer and the the masses of people out there who never got Bob Dylan in the sixties, they're rallying behind Bob Roberts because they needed that that creative oh, outpouring so it's like just of an energy. Alternate, okay, because like That's I, my I, take I, I on was it. trying to figure out if they're trying to draw any parallels to Bob Dylan, like besides the obvious, you know, comparisons of of the music, the all that stuff, but like personality wise and things like that. I was wondering if because it, it just seemed weird. I didn't quite get if they were actually trying to make a statement about Bob Dylan in any way. But I, it, to me, that's what it came across as, is he's just a Bob Dylan stand-in almost. But otherwise doesn't quite share anything other than just the, you know, the harmonica, the folk style, yeah. the the obvious parallels to his real music. But other than that, it seemed pretty, that was it to me. Yeah. So um, I, didn't, I didn't get anything else other than that. I think that if Bob Dylan had become a politician, that's the way he would have gone, or they're taking the popularity. Yeah, like I don't even know how Bob conservative Dylan. Bob, Bob Dylan was. I would assume he was a leftist. Yeah, like yeah. I would assume yeah. he was left. So yeah, I, he was. Th- I, that was meant to be like the opposite, right? Yeah. Like, so you okay. take that popularity that Bob was gaining on the left, and you transfer it into a guy who's running f- conservative for U.S. Senate. Yeah. So he can galvanize the. The state of Pennsylvania, which in 1980, 84, and 88 had voted majority Republican. Yeah. So when you get someone 
like Bob Roberts, who's got that popularity through folk music, mm. you can get a lot of people behind you for your voter basis, especially yeah. if you're voting Republican. Yeah, like it took me a while. Like I'm, I, I kept thinking, like, oh, is he drawing? Are they trying to draw comparisons to like Reagan as well? Like, what are they going for here? So it took me a while to kind of just figure <laughs> out what they were trying to make fun of or what they were trying to to satirize. But um, just because I didn't have uh, not a deep enough knowledge of the time, because I, you mm. know, I only know so much yeah. about it. So I was kind of like, am I missing something here? Uh, yeah. So I just had some questions about that. The film <laughs> also... He put the goggles back on. Yeah, sorry, we gotta, like... <laughs> gotta narrate fill, him. Fill, list, fill listeners in. The film's also very ableist because there are, like, people walking around and stuff, and there's no one who's really represented as disabled aside from Jack Black. And there's also a scene where Bob Roberts gets shot, apparently, and he's in a wheelchair, and that's kind of like stolen valor for handicapped people. So it's a very ableist film. And it's also transphobic because there are no transphobic people represented in the film. And there's also a beauty pageant which features majority white people. So it's also all about body shaming and non-fat acceptance and it promotes skinny people. And it shows <laughs> women as objects. And even though that the the winner of the pageant was kind of a black woman, she wasn't black enough, so the film's still like really racist and everything. <laughs> exactly. If you're light, if you're light skinned black woman, it doesn't count. That's right, because it's like still kind of white. When they kind of vil- villainized that uh, the the black reporter as well, the black news lady as well. Yeah, yeah, she was like putty in the hands of Mister Robert to like kind of demolished her. Yeah. Yeah, she was, she was she was just there to be taken down by the white man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Terry Manchester, the the documentary film. This, this film is shot in a documentary style. It's not exactly like let's put the camera here like Kevin Smith and shoot it this way. It's <laughs> it's shot from a documentary point of view by an English guy named Terry Manchester, and he's following the campaign of Bob Roberts all over Pennsylvania, and like there's religious persecution in it too, because like only one religion is represented. And it's like all about God and Christianity and stuff. There's no mention of Buddhism or like any of the other religions. So that's like super terrible and stuff. I will say though, actually religion in this movie, I thought actually kind of played a, it wasn't that it wasn't prevalent. That important. No, it outside was, of the like typical the, American, it was more uh, like American exactly. God we trust. Typical kind of stuff. American or like, yeah. excuse yeah. me, I'm going to go pray. And then that was great. That was really fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, Quick question: What so uh, millennials are considered to be what uh, what year to what year again? Eighty nine, eighty one to like two thousand. Yeah, it's are about sure? eighty one. Yeah. It's always debated. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is always, always, always debated. I've it's always, like, always but, heard eighty one yeah. to two thousand. I've heard eighty three to something, but it's all kind of around I've that heard area. So yeah. many different. Uh, yeah, like. It's like, like early 80s to like... Some people consider like, 90s to be like Gen... They have like Gen X, Y, Z, Well, that's Z, people right? who were born well, in the... Z is the new one. Well, well there's... Mm. Gen, the Gen X yeah. is supposed to be people who, who yeah. grew up 60s. in like... No, no, the bit like, who, who were born in the born 60s, 60s and 70s. Yeah. And were like our age in the 90s, pretty much. Well, I yeah. just remember being confused by what what we labeled as generations and then thinking like, oh, I should just look this up definitively or find a source but there's no t- definitive answer or proper sourcing yeah. it's just a constantly in debate so there's kind of no point unless you're a baby boomer in which case it seems to be fairly consistent there's not really much yeah. else yeah. 40s yeah. to 60s is baby boomer so take yeah. it from me because i was born in the early 80s yeah. the definitive answer is i don't know <laughs> yeah that is, that is the best answer and the so reason say, like people always say millennials and i'm like do you just mean like modern adults now like like people no, who would be at this no, point it's adults? young people it's young, pretty, young adults that's, that's all yeah, it is millennials it's just be, a right? different name for Aww. describing the, the the this modern generation that's just, really it yeah why do i i guess you could just say the the modern generation of, of young people yeah, well, so, I sh- yeah of I, young adults and 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 younger yeah. i should have said the current generation like people born year 2000 to present yeah. instead of saying that's, millennials yeah see 2000 gen present, z that, that feels like yeah is that yeah, gen z z yeah yeah it's a new it's that's a new the generation, weird thing yeah. because yeah, they're different than my generation. But my generation grew up in the '90s, and then you know you grew up in like coming into a lot of this uh, the tech we have now, and uh, like the the age of the internet in yeah. a big way, like yeah. in your home, like we came into that, and then the kids from 2000 were born into it. 
so yeah that, that is a lot how born people, like yeah. in the p at, at its you know at its peak when they had it pretty much from the get-go and yeah. or they're talking about the generation with like iphones and ipads in hand yeah like from from birth mm-hmm. pretty much pretty so much. so like i think that's a good distinction between generations yeah. but it's so convoluted that i i don't it's funny uh, i recently people always say yeah. millennials and i go like yeah. what do you what do you mean yeah <laughs> like i i get it like but millennials just feel, feel so general it's a little broad yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know yeah, i recently I watched this college humor video where they tackled that same issue like i'm not a millennial i'm a like a pad menu means those who got to use the iPads and all that. So they broke down like there's six of them. And each <laughs> one broke into like I was born in 1991 and that's post internet. So I'm internet millennial and all that. So they just it's it's just all labels and yeah. I'm, I think I'm, really inter- I'm internet millennial. Should I say dial up millennial? That's actually was a joke. <laughs> they did it? say a dial up yeah. pre dial up and post dial up. What's dial up? Dial up. Uh, that's a good one. Is it is like they're like an MSN messenger yeah. era? Yeah. Era. AOL. Well. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, to me, it just shows th- what this movie proves is that nothing much has changed, just the names. Yeah, yeah. it's um, just just the titles. That's yeah, really it. I would say like you could just say the current generation or or the the uh, young adults or whatever. Yeah. Just say like the age group you're talking about. It's never because people say yeah. millennials. And I'm like, who the fuck are they referring to right now? Me? Because I I don't care if you call me that, but at the same time, I I just I don't know if. You're trying to generalize like my age group, or you're trying to generalize like after me, or, yeah. or what's? It's just I don't know. It's, it's funny, to... like people who are like millenn- yeah. like consider millennials now are already complaining about people who are like in what you said, calling the Gen Z, Gen, Gen Z, Z. Yeah. yeah, Gen Z, 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 Z whatever. Z. I don't know. Sorry, we're Canadian. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. To... I'm just representing, you know, yeah. the so Americans. Are, yeah, <laughs> Z, Z, Z. We don't care. We don't. We don't discriminate. It's not like you couldn't tell we're Canadian by all the movies we've shown so far. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one was pretty patriotic. This one was. Uh, patriotic film for america yeah. yeah this was way more american than than our normal film yeah. yeah um yeah no but it's just it, yeah no it's interesting i guess you could uh as i i guess young adults like they're they're the ones kind of ch- at this point so championing that whole s- social justice like who have that uh segment that is social. That could be considered social justice warriors, yeah. or ones who take it a little too they're, far. They're left extreme, like maybe a little too far left, left extremists, as opposed to, mm-hmm. I don't know what the alt left. Left call their it. brain at the know. door. The- oh, yes. <laughs> oh, they're coming for you, man. <laughs> they will find you. Yeah. And they're gonna hurt you. <laughs> get me right in the butt. <laughs> that's right. You can. You in can, the butt. It's okay. You can just go get Alex Jones to defend you. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. yeah. The oh, cancer boy. viruses are in your vaccines, <laughs> and if you don't like it, the government will send the police to your house to SWAT team your family. Infowars.com retransmission starts now. Get the boner pills. Buy the DVDs. Make copies of them. Infowars.com. Way too accurate. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh you just scary. gotta yell a lot and just yeah. We well, gotta you know. yell, but you gotta yell like you're running out of breath. Destroy your like, enemies. There you go. Boots on the ground. <laughs> like just say I, shit, random shit like then, that, but, and but then, then say Infowars occasionally, and then all of a sudden take it down a notch. Like just be yelling. I'm and then sorry. Go, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine. And then promote something. Like immediately yeah. promote one of your products, uh, and then you are you nailed it. I uh, I have a recommendation for you, Andrew. You should see the Alex Jones and um, Death Grip smash up. Oh, oh my that god! Fantastic. It's pretty great. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> is like it like something viewing. like uh, just a guess here? But is it something like it, like it goes, it goes, it goes, mm-hmm. it goes, and then Alex Jones? No, that no, would be great. No, no, they use Beware actually. <sighs> oh fuck! Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Any Death yeah. Grips? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Yeah, anyways. A re- high recommendation there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about this film. Yeah. Okay, goggles are back on. Sorry. Okay, so Jack, you used the word label earlier. I did. And Zach used the anti-woman term broad. So like... <laughs> <laughs> So everybody listening, I encourage you to send homemade bombs to Jack's no, mailbox. Someone is. I actually agree labeled with this Zach. Too. Okay, like oh my god, you are oh, you are like oh, yeah. Just imagine that know? they're gonna send shit to you just because they're gonna mix up our names. <laughs> oh, actually, yes, yeah, Scott's gonna send the bomb and he's gonna yeah, mix up our names. Yeah. He still uh, fucks it up. Scott is the bomb. He yes, is. He is the bomb. We love you, Scotty. Goggles on. Okay, so we're gonna talk about this 
film now. So, Jack, you're the first one we're going to ask. And oh, yeah. we want to know what you thought about this puff piece propaganda made by that notable white supremacist, Tim Robbins. <laughs> yeah, Tim Robbins, a really clear white supremacist, that man. Um, I didn't know he directed this. Um, and actually, it, it explains a lot now, um, given yeah. the tone and where this film went. Um, so yeah, I had never heard of this movie until he showed it. I didn't know anything about this. Um, didn't know it was a mockumentary, didn't know any of that. Um, yeah, no, because of like what's been going on around lately today, it's kind of, a lot of this feels fresh in your mind of like, you know, and it's, a, it's eerily similar. I just love how watching in these old movies of like dealing with the politics of the time and what they're arguing about and just it, I always it just it's disconcerting how like nothing's changed and it's almost mm. like celebrities ascending to positions of political power may have some relevance to yeah mm. and that was relevant in the 80s yeah, too I was gonna, with like, Reagan that came out re- like yeah. post yeah. Reagan not pretty fresh still so. and it's interesting also how like this movie you know is satirizing the right uh, and it's being directed by someone who is very liberal and all that with Tim Robbins and all that um, but it also, was, I think it was taking a little shots, um, on like, cause this was during the Bush and Clinton ele- uh, election as well around 92. It was released in 92, but in, in the film, it, the first words on the screen are October, 1990. And Tim Robbins wrote this film. I think it was like right after Reagan was elected in 84. Cause he shot the script around for a good five oh, to okay. six years. So yeah. I think he was taking a lot from okay. what he saw yeah, during so the Reagan administration. Those, uh, those mm-hmm. that Reagan, like that's why I was saying yeah. like, drawing parallels with Reagan. I kept thinking like, I, I feel like they are in some instances here. There's some, something in there. There's some influence. In yeah. It. It's the rise of that kind of conservatism that yeah. we see is very, very powerful today that mm-hmm. wouldn't from Reagan uh, all the way up through George W. Bush, yeah, and then it's it's kind of there with Donald Trump because well, he's he, he's taken a lot of yeah. the power of the right and he, that he used that to get into power, like yeah. especially with the religious right because he panders yeah. to them all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, piece of shit. Well, <laughs> it was uh, yeah, it was that it was the war on drugs stuff. It was that oh, kind yeah. of thing where you're like, oh, okay, this is kind of Reagan inspired. Oh, that's very it feels Reagan. very Reagan inspired that's what because he... like that's where it started and, drugs and you could tell tank. like all yeah. those yeah the drug songs and stuff like that and the you know those little you know uh, just like what the what did he say it's a uh, crack is a ghetto drug or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. year old uh, yeah, just shit like that. I, I kept thinking like, oh, this is all making fun of the Reagan administration yeah. Yeah. very mm-hmm. clearly. Yeah. So that's why I asked you that question because I'm just like, confused at the end of the day. I was sitting I was sitting there like, what's it making fun of? Am I just too stupid for this? Am I just some <laughs> dumb fucking millennial that just doesn't understand? <laughs> <laughs> doesn't understand anything that's going on. But, you know, like, is this deeper than I'm taking it right now? Like, I get the Bob Dylan stuff. And Maybe I get it the is, Reagan bro. stuff, but yeah. I don't get the rest of it. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, it's yeah. every day, bro. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm. Oh, there's a Logan Paul generation now. That'll oh, that'll be oh, that's its own. No. We're gonna start a new generation. I know it's crazy. Logan Paulers. Is yeah. that what they're called? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't know. No, they're not. Low gang. Low gang. That's what they're that's called. What it is low gang. So yeah. Stupid. Next that's so up. Great. Next up, the mortuary. Let's go look at dead bodies, yo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Jake Paul is every day, bro. That's yeah. Him. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Uh, Anywho, Anywho, go ahead. You were saying. Yeah, no, the reason why I brought that up is because it's now knowing that this movie actually was almost kind of predicting what how the next election would go. Because with uh, Clinton and how being uh, how he related to the everyman by remember they played that famous sax solo um, in front of Arsenio Hall or whatever. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. And that just reminded me of that. It was like, oh, yeah, no, just like both sides kind of like play up their their talents to show look i'm one of you yeah um but uh with this movie uh i thought the when it was funny it was really funny i thought the comedic bits uh, i thought were nailed so especially all the music performances all the music videos um the odd little line here that you're just like they just throw out you're just like oh shit like that's that's a bit heavy um my biggest gripe with the movie, though, um, is I felt like tonally it's a bit inconsistent. It can get it's it plays off as a like a satire, and then all of a sudden gets extremely political almost for a good bit. Yeah, where it's dead serious, and I felt like that kind of took away from the movie because then it almost became like 
a little too political at times where this is supposed to be making fun of it. Um, so that was one thing that sort of kind of threw me through a loop for, for a bit. But the main thing I think why I think it's a little inconsistent because I think their approach of uh, making a mockumentary, making a fake documentary, I don't think worked that well. Um, I thought, what I mean that doesn't work is I thought the approach was fine. The mockumentary idea was great, but it doesn't, their discipline of keeping it looking like a, uh, like a documentary, I didn't think held up throughout the whole movie. I think at times mm. it felt like a movie. Like they, yeah, would, set up, they yeah. would set up shots and sequences that I'm like, this would you would never see this in a documentary. Hmm. You would never see this play out like a documentary. It feels like an actual movie, you know. And I feel like there was times where it felt a little jumbled that with that, hmm. where it would lose the discipline of a documentary and it would become a movie. Um, and I felt like that kind of took me out a bit and kind of played in with the inconsistencies of the movie because there's times where like they would cut to. Um, uh, what was the uh, reporter's name again? Bug Bugs Rap. Bugs, yeah. yeah. When they would cut to him outside and he's just talking with somebody about stuff, but it's framed and it's shot and it's edited, not like a documentary. It's edited and shot like a movie. Um, and when it would cut back to the documentary stuff, it just didn't match at times. So I feel like this is sort of like, this was the early stages of the mockumentary where it wasn't really... You know, a couple of years prior to that, you had Spinal Tap, which mastered it, and it was the first one to really perfect that. Yeah. So I feel like it wasn't, not everyone had a full grasp of how to properly do it. Yeah. So I don't know. I felt like the discipline of making a mockumentary, of making it actually look like a real documentary, I think kind of didn't work all the time uh, with the movie. So that's sort of my biggest thing that I saw with the movie. Hmm. One of the shots in the film, the longest freestand not freestanding but longest following shot when they're going into the building and, and bugs is following in bugs is already in there actually yeah. and they're trying to find out where the the campaign room is in the bottom of the building <laughs> that right. that shot was an homage to spinal tap that you know what actually i kept that thinking about that that makes a lot yeah. of sense and those moments really worked when yep. it actually was like a documentary and it added to the humor of it it added to the satire like that whole scene was great but I think when it got really serious or it kind of the movie almost felt like a pause to kind of say a message or anything like that. And like I said, um, and but luckily those weren't too. They were sort of scattered all over the movie. But like I said, the main thing that took me out was I felt like at times it, it lost the documentary feel, became more of a movie at times. And I felt like the, the inconsistencies with that kind of hampered the movie down a little bit for me. Um, because yeah, no, when it was funny and the comedic parts hit, it was great. Like we were all laughing at it and, but when it got serious, it got slow. I, it just kind of, the energy was just lost and it took a while for sometimes for it to come back. Um, yeah. And also I, I kind of don't know overall what the movie was trying to say. Hmm. Like what's its overall objective. Um, so a little inconsistent with that as well but the like i said overall i did enjoy the movie it's fascinating to look at uh, especially during the time and just seeing uh where the world was at that time and how certain people viewed it but uh its execution i thought was a little uh mixed there are restrictions when you take the the point of view of making a film from a documentary point of view particularly because you're restricted sometimes in who you talk to or who wants to talk to you, mm. where you can go. Because you remember Ray Wise's character would oh, sometimes yeah. go grubbing for the camera and just like try to block way. it out with yeah. his hand. <laughs> yeah, let's go over here. Let's go over there. I don't want to talk to you. And you can only be in so many places at once. Whereas if you shot it as a real film, you can be absolutely anywhere at any time. You can get all angles of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim Robbins... He, he did want to go with the, the mockumentary because he does want to get a bit of a message across. Mm -hmm. But there is there is a certain chaoticness to it that I think helps. But but you got to be in that mindset. You've got to be interested in this kind of thing mm -hmm. to really follow it no matter how slow it gets. Because when, oh, yeah. you, when you see Gore Vidal, uh, the late Gore Vidal, fucking love him. So when you see Gore Vidal 
you shut up and you listen to him. Like, that's one of the things. You listen to your elders, and Gore Vidal especially. Like, Tim Robbins asked Gore Vidal to be in this film. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what you hear Gore Vidal say, especially when he's at his desk, that's improvised. Mm -hmm. There are very few actual written lines for Gore Vidal because he wanted Gore's point of view. Yeah, he had some of the best lines, actually. I like the most, like, poignant ones um, yeah. and some of the most uh, random ones, too, like his story with the frog was a little interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there was one that he mentioned, uh, I can't remember for word, but it really, like, hit home. It was a very subtle one. But, uh, yeah, no, like, performances were good and I liked the characters and... Um, but, yeah, just, I thought at times it just felt a little inconsistent with its tone overall and like i said the, the discipline of making it a full mockumentary I, I felt slipped at times yeah. um which i think hurt the movie but uh it is i, I it is a fascinating movie to watch uh, so I'll, I'll wrap it up at that okay yes yeah, spinal tap following a rock band and bob roberts following a political campaign so yeah what it's that, it's going to be quite um, different that punk uh punk rock one as well a uh, hardcore logo hardcore logo that's yeah. what i was thinking. great movie by the yeah. way yeah. yeah yeah hard hardcore logo they were doing like a dead kennedy's thing right kind of yeah it was um maybe not quite dead kennedy's or but they were, they they were a little doing, more modern they were doing than that like, uh, well they, the band was called hardcore logo no but it was meant to be kind of like parallels to uh oh i, I don't remember it, oh remember. it might have it's it's another canadian punk band i'm forgetting the name now oh, oh, this is gonna um, kill me you know who I'm doa not there you go doa that's yeah. the one okay yeah uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, them. Um, yeah, that's a cool one too. So Tarantino's a big fan of that one, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's promoted like it. Hardcore logo, man. Yeah, it's, it's got quite. Maybe involved. I'll bring it in. Anyway, yeah, you're mentioning Spinal Tap. That kind of, I also uh, remembering Hardcore Logo is like another example. Yeah, of kind of doing that. So, um, but I hadn't heard of this one. So mm -hmm. this is new. Do you see Hardcore Logo two? No, I haven't. It mm -hmm. was okay. Yeah. Anyway. SJW goggles. Oh, here we go. Oh, here boy, we go. here we go. <laughs> Rylan. So, like, women were really underrepresented in this male splooge of a piece of shit male fucking male patriarch, white male the patriarchy. patriarchy. The movie. It, it's yeah. like a big old patriarchy bukkake from the oh. 1% all over oh, you. Boy. <laughs> so, so tell us why you hated this anti-feminist bullshit <laughs> oh, that was a load a um, yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> you're going a bit too far there with that word oh i'm going too far <laughs> you are going too far my oh, friend that crossed okay. the line that crossed the line all right oh, I, yeah. I know That's where we stand one. now no, I like no alex in just the right quantity and you you had the one more you were in you were in the balance you've uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. destroyed everything you this blew is now your load <laughs> i had a friend who thought it was pronounced budokai just thought i'd throw that in there <laughs> Bring Budokai. them in. Yeah, Budokai. And we were like, Lord Budokai? And we were like, talking about this. Like, this, this new, like, Which one? I mean, there's been so many. Have, oh, it's been Coast so, friend. There's been so many Budokai games. I mean, there's Budokai. three of them. So. Budokai. have been knighted. Yeah. Like Lord Budokai. I thought it was so That's funny. what you're thinking of? I think Dragon Ball Z Budokai. That's, well, that's what I mean. I was thinking of that, too. And it was just like some mystical like being or something. I immediately like, go to Goku with yeah. Super Saiyan hair. That's what yeah. I think of. Anyway. All right, we can have Zach and Andrew fetish hour another later, and another, and another, <laughs> yeah, yeah, another um, setting. Enough from uh, the patriarchy <laughs> peanut gallery. Yeah, she's just <laughs> shutting. She's just shutting the men down. What the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah honestly, God, you know, I don't. Honestly, I don't, you don't even have know. to go take it too far. Okay, I, I don't even know why they bothered making this film because honestly, men have just been in power for too long anyway. So I don't know why anyone is still <laughs> listening to them. Like, look where they look where they've gotten us. Um, no, but anyways, I think um, I think in one word, you pretty much summed up what I. I feel this movie is about and that was pandering not bukkake uh, pandering <laughs> <laughs> all right maybe maybe the second one is a little bit uh, it, it's a spiritual significance as well all right. but uh, <laughs> but um yeah pandering i think feel like this is with the mockumentary style it goes to show how voters are drawn to a persona rather than policies and how this probably isn't even a modern phenomenon although it's kind of just coming to our attention now um yeah basically you have this this celebrity who is like kind of be celebrity who everybody's who, who's kind of rising to fame and ends up making his way into politics and bringing his audience with him into into that realm as well and 
just really just comparing how his uh, right leaning policies compare to the the left leaning policies the scene that stuck the most with me is when both him and the um and his opponent the uh senator paste um are both giving their speeches and cutting back and forth Mm -hmm. and bob roberts is basically just is is trying to make the people it's trying to rile them up and make them angry. It's basically, you've been denied your American dream. This, the, all of this is owed to you. Um, basically, just you, you deserve all of this. Uh, put your faith in God and pray and everything you deserve will come to you. And then on the other hand, you have the, uh, the, the Democrat, the, the bleeding heart liberal, uh, basically being like, we need to, we need to acknowledge homelessness. We need to talk about childcare. We need to, to step up and take responsibility for these problems. And nobody, nobody wants to hear that. It's just like, oh, we have to like actually take social responsibility and <laughs> actually do stuff. Yeah, we have and, to like, live in not, reality. And like, we're not entitled to anything. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't want to hear this. Yeah. Like, let's. I, I like what the other guy's saying a lot better, and it's. Uh, and what people need to learn in this movie and still need to learn is that just because they say pretty things uh, doesn't mean it's actually going to help anybody. Mm-hmm. Exactly. There are there were books written years ago. There's one of them from, I think it's 1928. It's called Propaganda, and it goes into how you can manipulate the mass mind. You can manipulate people in crowds. Uh, I think one of the the examples is when you insert a person or two into the crowd, and they they re- they really riled up, and they and they can shout something, and eventually that'll infect everyone else, and they'll they'll get those vibes, that energy, and they'll feed off of that, and whoever's speaking, who has those plants in the crowd, he'll feed off of that because he's got something prepared. He, of course, and that's that's one of the ways that politicians back then or even just public relations, would use that to their advantage. And I'm going to invoke Godwin's Law here, and for those of you who don't know what Godwin's Law is, it's the probability of bringing up Hitler in a conversation, and I'm sorry, but I'm going to do that now, because he was great at that. He knew how to rile people up. I mean, mm-hmm. that's why he Absolutely. got people behind him. Power. Yeah, it's not like the German people were playing video games and they got violent all by themselves. Hmm. They were coerced into it bit by bit, <laughs> incrementally. And and Gore Vidal's character, his Brickley Paste. Comparison. Yeah. What? His yeah, frog his frog comparison, comparison right? incrementally, just turning yeah. it up a little bit each time. That's exactly what that is. Mm-hmm. And it, with with a mockumentary like this, you can take little facts and bits like that insert them in so the audience actually learns something and there's a lot you can learn from watching this two or three times i think Mm -hmm. and yeah i feel in terms of how jack feels about the mockumentary style i i mean i feel like there were there it there were some moments like the one you were talking about with uh towards uh near the end with the 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 journalist uh, bugs character um I feel like maybe there were some parts where what maybe it wasn't clear like who was behind the camera or if it was a different camera operator than the rest of the footage that we're seeing but I mean I still feel like that the the product that we're viewing is a compilation of stuff that people were filming it may not have been the the same it may may not have been a solo uh perspective exactly there may have been two or three uh camera people who were seeing a mashup of is kind of the feeling I got because I felt I felt I mean I, I mean I'm definitely not well as well versed on the technical aspects as like you would be or like Zach would be but I feel I especially the way that the lines were delivered and such I felt it was really just organic and somewhat natural and and even though some of the lines were just like out of nowhere like blatantly satire but just the way that they're delivered in such a casual offhand manner it's i i I found it pretty believable oh no no like a lot of those were like fine and i said when it when it was a documentary it worked Mm -hmm. um i just felt like at times it wasn't consistent enough with its uh with it them saying they want to be a documentary with if you're gonna go i didn't feel like it felt overly cinematic though it felt really like tight and i'm not saying cinematic like it looked like a movie where you have like the your basic coverage setup i'm just saying like it didn't feel like a documentary at at times it just felt like a a random psa movie or something like that i don't know Hmm. i suppose but i feel like the format for a documentary is pretty broad so 
that it would still yeah. qualify. I, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but for me at least, it just at times it, it stopped feeling like a documentary, and yeah. it just it didn't at just at times. Yeah, but like mm-hmm. documentaries don't always need to have like a, like an exposition dump from a narrator, you know? No, like I it know need that. That's modern. Modern documentaries are a lot like that, but mm-hmm. I mean. I don't I know. Suppose- like, a, a, yeah, broad would be. A, I, I'd agree that it that it's a pretty. Broad, <laughs> be careful with pretty, the word broad. Sorry. It's a pretty general. Sorry. You're either sorry. misogynist or fat shaming. Shit, I can't both. help it, man. My, yeah. it's. I was, I, I was just born into this male privilege, so I don't <laughs> quite. Uh, I I can't even notice it to some. You just having great Like misogyny. a fish in water. It's mm-hmm. just. It's- I, I don't even know that it's there so it's just etched into you by society automatically yeah. it's 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 not really your fault but well it is you still i can't help it, it but i'm still i'm just you have a y chromosome shit. so you're part of the problem sorry yeah i just have to be really i'm just really sorry about everything about myself um so yeah it's a general format uh mm. i i find that it's a i i see it as a general format whereas it, it could go so many different ways like i look at like i don't know uh, one that sticks out in my mind like uh like a citizen four or something like mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. and uh, compare that to something like um like uh um uh like making a murder or something like mm-hmm, that right mm-hmm. they just feel so different from each other um I, I, like i would say citizen four is a good example just because it uses a lot of uh like in the moment like it's a weird documentary in the sense of it actually rather than just telling a story and trying to capture uh, like interviews and stuff like that it actually captured the the real life moment where mm-hmm. these things were happening so it feels very cinematic for a documentary it feels very tense for mm-hmm. a documentary mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's still very much a documentary yeah. because mm-hmm. it was real no i know so like yeah. and this is mocking that so it's obviously all fake mm-hmm. on purpose but uh, i i i don't know that having those elements or feeling cinematic at times take detract from it, like make it f- not feel like a document when i mean uh, like i've seen documentaries use uh, a cinematic flair like man on wire is a good example mm-hmm. of that where they do reenactments and they kind of make it feel like a mystery yeah. um or a suspense thriller so i know i totally get that no Cit- citizen four it wasn't a reenactment That's no no no, 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 thing, man, no man on wire i said that yeah the, the, i know um but i've and i've seen like I've seen enough mockumentaries to uh, to kind of like have an idea of like how it works. I'm just for me, I'm just saying like like I have to would bring up I have to rewatch it to bring up certain examples to kind of like say this is kind of where it's the discipline of like you are going full gung ho and making a documentary. You got to go all the way with it with a lot of things. And to me, like even like the documentary they were trying to make didn't always flow like it was making this one documentary and then this type of style with like following the camera and you can see the director and the like, kind of like a michael moore film mm-hmm. or something like that and then it would become more of a sit down sit down where you have interviews to a you know a, a nameless faceless uh, interviewer and all that and then it would cut to stock footage put together to kind of create like a newsreel ish mm-hmm. type of thing like i've seen all that and those are all different uh approach to making a, a documentary or to make something look like a documentary but i felt like this one it just it just didn't f- have a good flow hmm. that just took you out of it and i don't know just there was times that i just felt a little disconnected like i, I it reminded me that I, that I wasn't watching a documentary at times it just felt like i was just watching a movie or at times just uh a speech hmm. you know it just didn't at times it just lost the documentary feel for me I'm um, not saying that it turned into a, when I mean like it turned to a movie. I mean like it it, it lost the um, the illusion of being a documentary at times mm-hmm. for me. It just I could see it, it being a movie or a political piece at times mm-hmm. where it kind of lost um, its uh, sense of identity at times, and then it would come back. And then and when it came back, I, I was digging it. I was like, yeah, this is great. And then it would slowly dip for a bit, and then kind of would dip for a little too long, and I didn't know where it was kind of where it was going. And then they would put in something that actually would work really well. But I don't know, like certain ways of how it's cut together. And also it, it didn't really establish its world, I think, and its rules with like the cameraman and how many cameramen there are, as you mentioned. Because there's some things like, like crowd shots where they would cut to like individual close ups of each person looked like extremely well framed, extremely well staged up. Mm-hmm. 
and then it would cut to another camera where it's all over the place. So it, it like it feels like it just like they were trying to make a documentary, but they didn't know how to make a documentary really. Mm. So that's sort of like what, how it kind of felt at times. I don't know. So so what basically the summary of what Jack is saying is that if he wants to watch a documentary, he wants to watch it rough. <laughs> he likes his documentaries rough. That's what he likes. Careful, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any more thoughts on it, Rylan? <laughs> I think we can pass it on to Zach for the time being. <clears throat> All right, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, Goggles whoa, on. Hey, Rod! <laughs> I'm Goodbye. showing, I'm showing solidarity. <laughs> Pigs, okay? Like, oh my god! Check no, your privilege you at the girlfriend. door. She's a woman, okay? Yeah, she's not she some is. Girl, that's right. She's not your girlfriend. She is my friend. She's and my she's your girl. Friend. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> She's your empowered female friend, okay? Hey, step back right now and stop trying to impede on my freedom of speech, okay? Like, oh my God. Right, because SJWs care so much about freedom of speech. Yeah, fascist. Are you going to continue to yell at me until and uh, yeah. assert your right to free speech? Yeah, you Nazi. And stop trying. <laughs> yeah, express your right to free speech until somebody disagrees with you. Then it's harassment. Yeah, and calls you a Nazi. So there. So, Zach, mm -hmm. woman hater. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, I'm going to give you a chance here. Yeah. Even though there was no blood or guts or gore in the film, mm. were you still fully engorged, engaged engorged. in engorged. watching the film? Like, were you there with it? And did you, like, get it? You know, like, literally, you know? Oh no, it finally happened. Yeah, boy, oh, got a soundboard. You broke that sound effect cherry. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got How the fart. Have you been hanging on to Woo, I keep forgetting to bring it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got that nine button fart tune uh. box going. We're a real show now. I'm so proud. Yeah, we got the soundboard. Got the soundboard. We sorry. I'm sorry we've sold out. <laughs> We're like uh, that stock show. What's that? Cutting Edge Live? No. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Cutting Edge Live was was for anyone who's still listening. Cutting Edge Live was a parody of SNL, and SNL is on the NBC network, and NBC is owned by General Electric. and And John Cusack, who played the host of Cutting Edge Live TV show, it's a live TV show, like I said, just like SNL. He makes a little speech about Cutting Edge Live being like a, a show with a leftist slant that's owned by a news network that's owned by, um, well, what would you call General Electric? Because it's a huge company and they are an arms manufacturer. Yeah. yeah. They're a mon 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 monopoly, basically. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah in a way. Lot, you, I wouldn't things. say a monopoly because Lockheed Martin is huge too and it's not like Lockheed Martin has any more of a foothold over selling arms than General Electric does. Like they're they're big, but it's not like one has more than the other. I mean, just in terms of like all the companies they're buying up, like conglomerate. Yeah, it's a conglomerate. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this movie. Uh, so I, I actually really liked it. I thought that the uh, the chaos, as you had mentioned earlier, Alex, is kind of something that drew me in to uh, to I guess this world. Um, but no, I, I, I wasn't really lost or anything like the entire time. Like I just, I just thought it was, yeah, it was just really cool. And I, I liked what it had to say. I liked also a lot of the comedic bits really worked for me too. Like the parallels to like Bob Dylan, um, just the references and stuff like that. And I just loved how they kind of use like his, almost like his type of songs, like folk songs and things like that. But they used it in a certain way to like promote like, you know, our right kind of message and things like that. I yeah. thought it was kind of funny too. Um, yeah, and I liked also the whole documentary thing just because I didn't really say anything about, you know, because Jack was saying that, you know, it kind of switched from a documentary to a uh, to a film. I actually, that might have actually been intentional, I think, because I think some of those times when they, you know, were switching to more of like a cinematic, I guess if you'd call it that, or like a different style, I think was kind of a time to kind of like listen and to kind of listen to what like the people were saying, particularly. Um, that was a little more focused, I think, and just kind of like almost an aside to kind of be like, you know, these are the points they're making and things like that. And then back to the chaos and mm -hmm. things like that. That's, that's what I got from it at least. But I, I just also thought it kind of went well with the film again, being like, you know, all over the place and, 
you know, it's kind of like Tetsuo, you know, or it's, it's all, it's very crazy. It's, but it's a different way, right? It's, it's a very different way in that regard. But, uh, I don't know if it's yeah. as different as Tetsuo. No, no, no. But, but it, but it is definitely like, you know, chaotic in its own way. And I do like that. I, I do love that gag too, where they're trying to find the room and stuff. And they're mm-hmm. just constantly like getting dead ended and just like walking around and stuff. I thought that was great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought, it was, I thought it was really good. And you picked up on that Bob Dylan stuff right, right away. away. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I think of your opinions, Zach. Oh, it's good. That's good. Yeah, see, he's getting in on the soundboard action, too. Everybody loves it. Yeah, I want to turn this into Mad Money. That's the name of the stock oh. show. Mad Money. Yeah. That stock is... Two is the best one. Oh, yeah. Fuck that one was. I didn't even know what that one was. That's but what I hit. The best. Two is, number two is the best, which uh, is naturally. suitable. Children, yeah. children, children. <laughs> Sorry, you have a millennial at the table. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few. I got Gen- a generation few. Z. Yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. it. You got no more to say about how it was shot. Oh. The characters. I mean, I mean, you know, Tim Robbins. I mean, I I knew it was directed by him. I knew that you know, obviously, it's written by him, and I knew that. I, I knew, uh, like, a fair amount of the cast. There was obviously a lot of surprises, like, you know, the cameos mostly, like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, James Spader and Susan Sarandon just being on, like, the TV and then, like, disappearing. Like, they were just like, oh, I want to be a part of this kind of thing, right? Yeah, because they're friends of Tim Robbins, yeah. and when he asked them to be in the film, most of them said, I want to be a newscaster. So that's why oh, you cool. see them in those roles. Yeah, I thought that was really cool, and you would just sometimes you'd even just see them in the background, or you'd see them like very briefly, and it's like, oh, that's kind of cool, you know. Yeah. And you see kind of different people pop up here and there, and um, you know, Ray Ray Weiss, I, I always like him. Yeah, um, and that was like right in Twin Peaks era too. That was you know during that time, um, so I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And that was five years after RoboCop. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah he's great. I always really like him and. Um, yeah, and Tim Robbins was great, obviously, too. I thought he was hilarious, um, you know, in, in the main role. And, and of course, Jack Black, you got to shout him oh. out, too, just being like this, like, really weird, like, you know, he just stood out in that movie. I mean, and I know that, like, we all know it's Jack Black and things like that, so maybe it's a bit of that, but of course. But, I mean, it is a bit of just his, like, betrayal, too, of him just, like, Weirdo. being this crazy fanatic of like <laughs> Bob Roberts and just like staring. I love that one point where like he when you he first meets uh Bob Roberts and uh he's kind of standing there and he just like looks dead into the camera. Yeah. And it's just like, "Oh boy." Cuz he's so nervous. <laughs> yeah. He really wants to meet Bob. He's like oh, an yeah. evangelical Robertsian mm-hmm. disciple. Oh, exactly. Yeah. But uh yeah, I just I don't know. I I just kind of like the I did like the flow of it. I did like how it was kind of like nutty and crazy and Things like that, and it was yeah, it was cool. Nice. It, was, it was groovy. I like seeing uh, also uh, uh, a couple uh, other actors cameos, as you mentioned, mm-hmm. like uh, Ned Bellamy as well. Mm-hmm. You know who Be- Ned Bellamy is? It rings a bell. Yeah, he was. Uh, we saw him in Ed Wood. He was uh, the chiropractor who stood in for Bella Lugosi. Oh, <laughs> wow! And was that? I actually just made this connection. He was also the the. Um, uh, Elaine hires him to be like he's like the janitor and he's like he hires him keeps promoting him to be like head of like when he works with Jay Peterman he's like mm. this ex-army guy from Vietnam he's like oh we do it like this you know something mm. like that I don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you gotta get more sounds yeah well I got the poop soundboard but you're just gonna get a soundboard for each one well you can get one each on your phone thing. No, no, but this is more fun. You get a button. Yeah, okay? you need. A, you need yeah, you need. And it like, says sound effects. You need like '90s soundboards, okay? Yeah. You need <laughs> that analog shit. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, but no, it was it was a sexy good time, and I was very aroused. Oh yeah. Excellent. He was Big fully time. engaged. Yeah. Andrew, feels. Feels. <laughs> yeah. I, I ask everyone else like these these deep questions, and I just look at Andrew feels, and that's all it's gonna be from here till eternity. And he's gonna get so pissed off, he's gonna go postal on me one day. Ask me a real fucking question. You wanna know how into. I feel? 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Except it won't be a fucking soundboard. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, yeah. Uh, no, I'm more of a CJW, you know, uh, comp- competent justice warrior. I was like, that's what justice I care warrior. about. Co- well, I'm competent justice, as in, like, you know, I want all parts of the justice oh, uh, okay. system to be competent, not uh, fucking or- uh, incompetent, dumbass you know uh what was that like black christmas ass cops or <laughs> you know judges and shit fucking anyway so uh no i like the movie the the reason why i was uh i i was only doubting myself because i i'm not super familiar with uh with um bob dylan not just bob dylan like I, i'm familiar with his music um like i and again, it was the whole idea that I was under the impression that he was obviously uh, very leftist. So I thought, okay, yeah. well, they're obviously making fun of that. Yeah. But I don't, uh, am I missing something? Was more of what I kept mm. thinking. Like, am I missing some context just because I'm not, uh, f- just because maybe I don't have as deep uh, a knowledge of, of that time as maybe, you know, people who would have watched it at that time. Mm. Um but no, I had I, I guess I had enough to to get it because it it seems like nobody has said anything that I didn't quite pick up on already. So it's about technology taking over. That's what it's about. Technology Wrong. taking Wrong over. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's what it's about. It's about Bob Roberts taking over. Yeah, He's I'm the, noticing the, a th- the technology uh, uh, mecca. The theme continues with Alex's movies because uh, this is this is very political again. So and uh, it has to do with the media too, like in a you know kind of a sort of to, way to uh, to an extent. It's yeah. like media manipulation and things yeah. like that. So. Not so much in this one because this is documentary. The the way they shot this this was much more no, but objective. He was, he was uh, no, well, he was still. Manipulating manipulating the media you could see that through the lens you're of the talking about bob roberts yeah. was manipulating yeah. the yeah. Yeah. yeah through his political campaign yeah. and through supposedly getting shot so he can win the election like that's what puts him over yeah. above brickly paste because they were at like 44 and 43 percent yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Bugs' rant near the end, too, was good about how the media is bought and paid for anyway. Yeah, I could, I could see the moments where it, they were very clear where they were obviously trying to uh, to kind of dump uh dump the message on you the exposition mm-hmm. for the message on you uh it was it was when yeah the paisley was uh speaking right like when they would cut to his uh opinions basically yeah. just him speaking about his uh whatever opinion of whether it's on social programs or or uh you know what he thinks of the current political landscape uh it was just kind of random, but hmm. well, it was just kind of random. It was just his opinions. It's it made sense in, t- in terms of the the film, just because he's a politician, so yeah. he would do that. So it made sense that he was saying those things. But that's where it felt like, okay, here's what we're actually trying to to say. It was like there, or whenever the reporter was talking, uh, you know, if he would he would uh, talk about. Um, like whenever he would bring up the corruption and things like that, it's like, oh, he's kind of, he's kind of showing, uh, you know, the the corrupt nature of of uh, of like he's he's bringing up a lot of uh, a lot of things that are a little real that feel a little real, you know, yeah. and uh, you you could just kind of tell it was like those characters. It was it was, uh, yeah, it was the reporter. It was his opponent. It was the. Re- the any the reporter the other reporter who interviewed him you could tell that oh they were they were the ones who were kind of dropping things here or there that that the movie wanted you to pick up on it wasn't uh heavy-handed though i didn't think it was heavy-handed i thought it it worked it was it fit the film so it was subtle enough the whole documentary thing i was invested in how they shot it i was never really taken out of it i felt like it worked um and but uh, for me, I, I was so fixated on trying to pick up on, uh, OK, are they trying to say anything else other than, OK, this is like a Bob Dylan esque, uh, you know, character who, is, you know, is also a celebrity getting into politics. So that's there's a bit of, you know, a Reagan yeah. p- comparison to be made here. Yeah. Am I missing anything else? But I, my mind couldn't help naturally. My mind couldn't help but keep making comparisons to just right now because right mm-hmm. now it just it's it was constantly, uh, it was constantly relevant to 
thing uh, to a lot of what has happened in the last couple of years because it's almost identical in terms of uh, the the type of media manipulation that he was engaging in whether it was uh whether it was uh calling uh trying to discredit his sources he was this close to saying fake news i swear to god yeah <laughs> like it just felt like because he said uh old news and things like that it was almost the same thing yeah uh he mm. he was just trying to discredit anybody who said anything that was oppositional uh, like that was uh, in opposition or he didn't like right yeah um but he did it in a charismatic way which mm-hmm. again is very relevant to uh to how to the most recent administration right and, and it's 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 uh, and trying so hard to uh to win over the common man and that seems to be a right tactic that that works time and time again definitely and it yep. feels so cyclical in a way that that um it's just it keeps happening right so the left will will come will come back and then this is how the right takes over again it just keeps fucking happening so yeah it was crazy to see it again because i'm like that just happened like everything that happened in that movie just happened again it's the same cycle Mm -hmm. uh so I, i i was watching it just thinking like i've seen this you know last you know uh just over a year ago, you know, I'm yeah. seeing, I, I, I just saw this. So this feels <laughs> relevant. It's, the time. Um, it's concerning how little we've learned. Yeah. Well, cause it's right yeah. from left. Cause again, it, it's, it's like a, it's a pendulum. So it'll swing back to the, to the left because there's so much, uh, the opposition always succeeds in the, in the media while the other, the opposite is in power. The, uh, while, um, yeah, the opposition will always do better in the media and do better ratings wise and and things like that while there's the uh, the other end of the spectrum in power right so right now the left is doing really well in when it comes to media just because uh you know they're they're the opposition yeah so, they're, they're the fox news right now basically mm-hmm. yeah and fox news did really well and when it was the opposite so That's right. now you're kind of looking it'll swing back to the left again and you watch this this whole uh right tactic of uh right wing tactic of uh you know the way that they try to discredit the media, uh, you know, um, uh, pander to uh, working class, the working class, yeah. and and try to to uh, try to just kind of try to play on their on their um, emotions. Not Try, just emotions, but I'm thinking to get more like really personal with them. Yeah, trying to yeah, trying to take their 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 uh their life situation and make it seem like it's all the left's fault right yes he's trying to get right there in your living room with some of the issues exactly and you know that we'll see that again too of course as soon as it swings back like so yeah it was it was interesting to watch that just because it, it felt so relevant now and i think that that um that's what i kept thinking about while i was watching this just because everything he was saying uh, just it, it was it was almost like it's been said just recently. So, mm-hmm. but I would I will admit he was a little more charismatic because he had that Bob Dylan quality to him. Yeah. Where it was like, oh yeah, this guy just sounds uh, you know sounds good to listen to, right? He's he's a little more eloquent. Um, but yeah, he's still a celebrity who is in power, who you know rising uh, to power, rising to power, uh, and using the same tactics. So I, I thought it was interesting. I actually enjoyed, I enjoyed watching it. I thought the performances were good. I thought the message was good. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't think it tried to be too heavy handed with its, uh, with its message just because uh, uh, it wasn't trying to say, Oh, you know, uh, like a, try to push a, a leftist view by saying, Oh uh, yeah. Social programs are so important and this and that it, it was subtle. It was just trying to mm-hmm. say, you know, hey, we're trying to focus on the big picture and and the future ahead, and you know, I don't want to play these games of of op, of uh, negative politics and things like that. That's so right. Mm-hmm. It was it, it was good. It was just a, it was very. They had every character kind of bring up a different issue, yeah. uh, and it wasn't. Uh, they didn't focus on it so much that it it became this. Uh, this is the message with flashing lights. You know, so yeah, mm-hmm. I, I I appreciated that and. 
yeah, overall, I enjoyed it. The times are changing back. Mm-hmm. I, I love that yeah. because, yeah. yeah, that is the right version of... Yeah, that is the right version of the times are changing. Yeah. So, yeah. And if yeah. It's but also it kind of works your, with what you're saying. Yeah, it, it fits perfectly with the pendulum analogy. As yeah, well. yeah, exactly. It, it, it's that's the, exactly what it is. The t- mm. the times are changing, swings left. The times yeah. are changing back, swings right. Yeah. It's exactly. the rebellion it's to of, the rebellion. Right. Mm. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's kind of. Uh, it's it's depressing, but it's, it is. It's yep. disconcerting for sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, that's just the way it is, I guess. At yeah. least uh, you have to at least whatever kind of side, whatever side you land on or whether you prefer one over the other, at least, you know, at one point it'll balance out. Right. So everything balances out in the end. Mm-hmm. That's the hope. Yeah, it typically does. Uh, the question is, how long does it take to balance out in the opposite direction? Uh, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. But yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, no, good, good pick though. Yeah, no, yeah. going off of what you were saying, uh, yeah, I think this movie is definitely more about the process than the message. You know, like mm-hmm. it just shows like how it, yeah, because as, as I said, I didn't feel like what this movie was trying to say, but I feel like it's just showing you how as we've alluded to that we've mm-hmm. seen this before and it just i think it does kind of allude to that in the movie as well that we have seen this before and it keeps going as a yeah, yeah yeah one thing i did want to bring up because uh, i th- i feel like this particular little it was very subtle but uh, to me it spoke it just spoke volumes mm-hmm. to a lot of things and it's very prevalent today is seeing the people certain individuals who were working for uh, bob roberts and they're all with it and then something is said or something uh catches one of his teammates or co-workers off at their attention and you can tell they're not they don't quite agree oh yeah. yeah yeah and to me i love those little moments because it kind of just sh- and it's so prevalent today as like are all these people who are trying to lift this man up do they really believe what they're saying and whether or not can they ever really be honest with themselves and whether or not they will actually, I don't know, like all, all of those moments, like particularly with like uh, the one moment that that brings up to mind was the one of the, I guess, security guards uh, mm-hmm. was uh, African-American and they just blurted out like, oh, she, I don't think she ate chicken. Mm-hmm. And I'm just and you just see the look. on his Oh, face. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, that is so great because you just have to wonder, like anyone like with the current administration, particularly, you know, whether or not all of those the aids or whatever can relate to that and mm-hmm. yeah it, showing the cognitive dissonance and suggesting the compromisation of personal values for advancement of your own political yeah values. and i just love those moments because it, it put a lot more in perspective than i think any of the, what the characters were saying you know throughout the whole movie yeah and there was a lot of that too i thought in when they were picking the campaign photos and he was like i want to stick with the old one he's like well what do you think and like they're all like oh yeah i love it but you could kind of yeah. tell that it's like ah, i don't know like I, I think you're full of shit or what I have you. I love that video uh, ad that they played. <laughs> like, I, oh, I lost it. It's like, it's quick and to the point. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't say a goddamn thing. No. Yeah. <laughs> just a flower, just yeah. blooming, and vote. It's yeah. It's like, oh, and you see those, though. Oh, yeah. All the time. And the negative ad, too. With yeah, the, yeah. That one was I great. love teens. Uh, yeah. I am so great. <laughs> just like all that stuff. It's well, like, oh, my God. You know God. your platform is weak or non-existent when all you can do is poke at your poke at your opposition yeah. rather than explaining your own attributes and why I'm such a great candidate. Be like, oh, just don't vote for this guy. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, it, it, it's it, kind it, of like a logical fallacy argument where you go after the portion of their personality instead of their argument Absolutely. yeah it, it just goes to my like argument that politics has just become professional wrestling <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, do you remember the chris rock movie from 2004 head of state yes. i watched that yeah. okay so near the end where they're debating they're like mm. oh, they're just going back and forth like children no it isn't yes it is or yeah. something like that yeah, like that's that, what it's yeah. devolved yeah. into pretty well, much. Well, you look at like all the video ads, they're basically like promos. Um, oh, yeah. And just putting down the character, uh, like their opponent and all that. Yeah. You look at the m- news outlets and all that, they're pretty much just like hyping, uh, it, up. hyping it up, yeah. hyping up the match. They're not about ideas. They're all about, you know, image and spectacle and all that. Same mm-hmm. with you look at a lot of like uh, debates or, you know, conventions and they have these gr- grand stages, these big lights yeah. and these 
just it looks like a big event you know it doesn't look and you can there's no substance to it it's all style Mm -hmm. um and that's pretty much and when i see that's what wins the day yeah and the other thing too is when you look at politicians and uh you're instantly skeptical with them because you don't believe any word they're saying no matter what even the most trustworthy one you feel like there's always a hidden agenda just like wrestlers you don't believe them Mm -hmm. because they're bullshitting (laughs) you so and it's funny just we have like a wwe hall of famer in the white house right now so (laughs) it's so funny yeah i know yeah but i mean like yeah you had a lot of catch like catchphrases uh, name calling it was it was a lot of catchy things right people had like People had sayings or, or uh, just, yeah, they had sayings or, or nicknames or, or just catchy things that they could latch on to, right? Yeah. Like it's something they could chant, something they could... Uh, yeah, it was something simple. Something simple. Yeah. It, it was it was, man. it was smart. Yeah, it was smart in the way that it was, it, it took advantage of, you know, uh, the average you know, the average person, right? They had something they could rally behind. And again, I think it, I don't think that, see, I, I'm, I'm more in the camp of, I don't think that, uh, everybody was like that. I don't think that like, say the most recent election turned out that way just because, just because, you know, everybody was along for the same ride. I I Mm -hmm. don't think so. I think that it was more of what you're saying with like the plants, right? The idea that it was the few riling up, the rest that's and they one might example not agree. though yeah they might not agree with everything that's being said but they get caught up in it and they latch yes. on to what they do agree with mm-hmm. that's and right it's something that i that i find a lot with people who you know who necess- don't necessarily agree with everything or mm-hmm. they're normal people but they still you know will go along with uh with the with the current right you know, and, and a lot of that is because they latch on to the things that they do actually care about that were said and they got caught up in the, uh, you know, the excitement and the yeah. and the the idea that things could change. Mm-hmm. The, the big thing that being that less of the same, more of something different, something that I actually care about. Um, yeah, so, that hopey changey from 2008. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that was big. But I, I feel like that had a, an overall like at least that was like. A moderate right like that was more central at least right like uh this was less hope and this was more this was less hope this was more hate this time <laughs> just because like yeah everything that was being shouted wasn't yes we can or something like that it was like locker yeah. up or something or shit like that right it was very like schoolyard yeah so <laughs> petty mexico will pay for it yeah shit yeah. like that whatever right it was it was a lot of that kind of stuff so i feel like uh but you know, yeah, no, for the left side, exactly. It's a catchy, it's a catchy thing that you can latch onto, and then it, you get caught up in the in the excitement. Yeah, the emotional. So fervor. whoever gets the um, the momentum, whoever yeah. gains that momentum, yep. will probably win in the end. Just because if they can maintain, no matter what the controversies that come, no matter who tries to assassinate your character, it has to be. I, and I mean, at this in this day and age, it would have to be something like uh, colossally bad, like a, like a convicted murder or something. Yeah. That's the only thing that could stop you at this point when you have that momentum. Yeah. So nowadays, that momentum is key. Whoever gets it first ends up winning, and I think that's what you you notice, and that's what this film kind of mm-hmm. uh, you, you know it kind of. Uh, it was showing as well, right? He was gaining momentum. It was tight. You know, it can still be tight, but it's that momentum that matters. That is, that's what's going to bring you, like, polls can say whatever, but yeah. when it comes to that finish line, it's that momentum that'll that'll carry you. Well, they alluded that in the movie. They said, like, it's all about the finish line, like, you know, those... Uh, yeah, he said he's strong. a finisher. Yeah, yeah. That, that kind of thing. That yeah. was great. And I, I love the the that you mentioned that tagline because... I feel that's also super relevant. The idea vote now, ask questions later. Yep. Yeah. Totally. People don't ask what the questions during the election and that happens constantly. And then, uh, then people start asking questions and doubting, you know, the choice and, and, and crit- that's where the criticism starts to come in. But you should have done because especially American elections, they like pretty much go on for over a year now. Yep. You know, they go on and on and on. Yeah. And you have so much time to to level that criticism, but nobody does. They get like caught up in the, you know, in the that 
fervor, right? They they get caught up in this this fever of of uh, what they're saying and and what they it's all about what they feel, right? Exactly. So, it's, it's, so it, well, it's, it's, it's all about that, and then all of a sudden, after they vote, then it becomes. Oh, hey, we actually have some real questions and criticisms now, well, or can look at it at least a little bit more objectively. I'm reminded of Brexit when <laughs> Google hilarious. reported that yeah. after the the Brexit referendum, Google searches for what is Brexit rose <laughs> oh, by yeah. like an insane amount of percentages. I think it's because yeah. a lot of the rest of the world was like, what? Well, that's true. But, but <laughs> no, I, think, I think even I think it was in even UK, like local, like, yeah. like within the like national the searches yeah. as well. Oh, like, like UK searches? Yeah, yeah. implying that people went out and voted as to whether or not they wanted to be part of the European Union and then promptly went home to research what exactly the European Union was. Yeah, like mm-hmm. what the benefits were and all that stuff. They yeah, were. and then go like, what? Uh, so that's, wait, what do we get? <laughs> that is literally yeah. voting first and answering questions later. It's like, oh, maybe it's a little bit late. People do yeah. that all the time. They get caught up. That's the problem with the personality having having it be personalities over over policies. Right? Well, maybe maybe they thought that they were going to get breakfast on the exit. You know, maybe they're just like, I'd vote for that. You know, get some Brexit. Some some Brexit. <laughs> it does sound like. A- <laughs> It does sound like some food. That sounds like a jack butchering of the word breakfast. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel right now. <laughs> Just shit for brains. Um, yeah. Brexit. <laughs> Brexit. So I got a little checklist here. If you want to be a successful Republican like Bob Roberts, hmm. number one, if if you're a folk singer, if you got a talent like that, that really helps. You got to be pro God, pro family, pro military, anti drug, pro self responsibility to an extent, and you gotta, you gotta do something for the children because mm-hmm. we gotta protect the children, save the children, help the children. It's all about the children. And down with social programs too. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> T- well, take that he, money and social, give it to the poor. Yeah, help the children. You but have fuck to have the social a, programs. You, <laughs> you have to have a socialist and communist narrative as well. Yeah, I feel just, like that's key. The idea that, that whoever is against you is either some kind of a socialist or a communist yeah. and that those are dirty words. I do actually kind of, it is funny how like the word, like uh, the dirty word communist, like are you a communist has actually kind of lost a lot of power. Lately. It has just it's because no longer the, dirty the Cold War is no. so far yeah. in our, your view that it's kind of, well, hold on. and But then, you know, I bet if people who <clears throat> still think of it in a negative light, if you ask them, well, could you define communism and, and mm, yeah. what it actually entails, they would not be able to, to give you a, at least a n- nuanced definition. Yeah. Oh, they'd say the Reds. It's, yeah, it's they'd giving just say money some away. Cold War. They, would, yeah. they would probably reference the Cold War. Yeah. yeah. More, so, so, socialism. Is socialism is an, even yeah. a, a more hilarious one because if you'd ask them to define that, they'd probably just give you communism. Yeah, exactly. It's so they harder. don't, they probably probably don't know the difference hard so. taxpayer yeah. dollars to lazy bums yeah. who don't deserve it so yeah. that's that's a republican mm-hmm. uh essential i would say is is as being uh using that as part of your narrative socialism is a big one uh or at least making your left-wing opponent appear to be use the word communist or socialist yeah mm-hmm. taking taxpayer yeah. money and and just throwing yeah. it away basically yes. being you have to be you always have to be about i did you mention lowering taxes right i that didn't mention be, lowering taxes that has that i but every far, republican yeah. candidate i've ever heard in my lifetime yes is well because that's a core component of their party but like it's it's really important that you mention that uh if the left is in power at that time that they're wasting taxpayer yeah. money and Bob Roberts said that during his debate with Brickley yeah. Pace, we want to lower taxes. And we, yeah. we want you to have the, you need to yeah. have oh, a house and, and have a nice vacation. the big thing as part of being part of the narrative. Yeah, what you're saying, which is, uh, yeah, it can't be just lowering taxes, but also pointing out that lowering taxes will lead to that money going straight to the American people like as opposed down? to where it's really going to go, which yeah. is not really back to them well although maybe a, a tiny percentage to make it look that way right yeah. or like just sprinkle a little back to you a dollar but, 50 raise each week. yeah yeah we're gonna we're gonna cut taxes but it's going to you know it's gonna barely benefit you but it'll benefit my friends right or maybe it'll go into savings and loan which yeah, exactly. will then be siphoned off for the CIA to run drugs from mm-hmm. South America back into Wall Street, and that's how Wall Street funds itself. And that's true to a degree. But don't you know the wealth trickles down? <laughs> yeah, like piss down the leg <laughs> of a dog. PP economics. The floor. PP economics. Um, no, no, no. 
<laughs> you know, I feel like you, we because this movie is centered around like a Republican candidate, you kind of shit on the agenda of the like the Republican agenda. But there's also a liberal agenda, like a Democrat agenda. Like their agenda isn't always that much better because they can a lot of times they they can have a similar kind of extreme narrative as well and and they're in their and the what they try to whenever they're debating they they do the same thing they'll latch on to key to key words and and key key components to their arguments that aren't always you know they're not they don't try to even be centrist sometimes or try to to have a debate where they'll uh they'll try to meet in the middle or come up with some kind of a solution they'll just harp on the same things right so it's not it's not always i think it works both ways as well just because you know we talk you talk about the right a lot they'll bring up these core components but yeah. so does the left oh they yeah. have so, so and that's that's the funny thing that I, I i wish a lot more people would realize that how, how yeah. similar it is the crossover yeah, yeah. like i because yeah. it's weird you can't just shit on the republican side of things and not realize that the le- that the, oh, the left the is just as guilty for left, as much yeah. like stupidity as the Republicans. Absolutely, yeah. totally. Yeah. It, it, it's both parties using. I can't remember what comedian or person said it, but the Republican Party is the party of bad ideas. The Democrat Party is the party of no ideas. So, like you were saying, Andrew, <laughs> yeah. that they're equally bad and they equally use the same manipulation Yeah, like they'll tactics. say, we're going to cut taxes, but they don't really give you much else other than lowering taxes. Yeah. But then, you know, like the left will say, like, we're going to, uh, you know, we're going to, uh, uh, sorry, like we're going to uh, lower tuition and we're going to do this and that. Burn. But they say the same shit and then nothing else. Like there's no substance to what they're saying. They're just making statements well, and like, it works well, on both sides. Yeah they're, yeah, they're just as guilty of just telling you what you want to hear because they're like, yeah, yeah. we're going we're gonna to lower tuition. We're going to yeah. offer uh, child care benefits or whatever. But they're, they're not offering any insight as to how they intend to do that or yeah. where that money is going to be coming from. So meaning they haven't yeah. actually yeah. thought about it. It's all just lip service. As you were saying, Rylan, like it's all pandering. It's just pandering to your voter yeah. of what they want to hear. Sometimes it works out though. Sometimes it works out and they, they pander, the people vote, they vote for somebody who actually understands that uh, they're understands what they're getting into. And then it's like the, it's the slow process where they know, Hey, I've got maybe four or eight years to do something here. Uh, and they start working on it slowly and you don't hear a whole hell mm-hmm. of a lot, but then four or eight years later, you notice this and this and this has changed or, and you can see the change there. So sometimes it works out that way, but then sometimes it works out where they'll make all these promises and it'll just be a colossal fuck up four to eight years later. Hmm. So pretty much. Well, and also because you were saying because the elections in the U.S. run for so long too, it's like you can only do stuff for like two years, and then you have to switch your focus to getting reelected again. Mm-hmm. It's hard yeah. to actually impart any actual change when you need to focus on keeping your popularity. Up. It, it's not, totally. and it's not just the presidential elections; like they have midterm elections as well. Oh for yeah, the senators and all that. So it's always yeah. a con. Like the news cycles, they don't, like they go straight from 2016 and they go straight to 2018. Straight yeah, there's to always some election coverage. It's, yeah, it's all yeah. about the next election rather yeah. than. And okay, let's actually try and fix what's yeah. wrong right now. It's always yeah. about running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's the whole part about it. Being, about sitting. They yeah. ain't sitting enough. Yeah, I know. It's all about. That's the whole part when I bring up. It's like wrestling and all that shit. It's not actually about the actual substance. It's just about the next race. It's about the next drive. Yeah. They get the audience worked up. You know who's gonna win. You know it's entertainment. Oh, exactly. That's basically what they're they've you know turned this into. Yeah, but people don't even vote. So well, that's I, well, a whole because other because thing. because. Yeah. because because hey, no one wrestling's not the most popular thing either. So yeah. it's the same thing. Like you've put off, you've turned off so many people. They don't care. Yeah, you know, you've made too many complacent, cynical people who don't care about the system because you've abandoned all of them. That's why Trump got into office because they, everyone on that side was just like so yeah, disconnected uh, with. If I'm not mistaken, that... isn't it the the Republican Party see, usually wins when there's a low voter turnout? That's correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. But yeah, you just create a lot of cynical people. I guess uh, on both sides. It's yeah. not just mm-hmm. cynical oh, yeah. left who are like No, no it's, like you make cynical sides. citizens. It doesn't yeah. matter. They're probably undecided or something to that effect. Well, maybe not in the last election, but yeah. they, they probably had a 
somebody they would pick over the other. But the, I think mo- it's most people. They're like, I don't want to vote for anybody because they all kind of suck. It, it's, so, it's, yeah, it's, it's, the it's the whole South Park. Yeah, it's yeah, the whole South Park. Yeah. 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 yeah, and that was back for like I mean, 2004. I, I, I think it, it only changes once people are so sick of what's going on or they realize, oh, God, this is really terrible. And mm-hmm. it, it kind of uh, galvanizes a group, like a large group of, yeah. or a, a vast majority of the country to get involved in the next election. Yeah. But it takes some really fucked up for, you know, four years in the Americans, in the Americans case in order to get people there. So, yeah, like I think it's, I thought, I thought, think that this uh, movie is an interesting look into the republican side of that Mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. right side of that that end of the spectrum i would also think it'd be interesting to look at it like a mockumentary for the opposite side when it's a when it's a right uh, a politician on the right who's currently in power that they're the incumbent and it's uh the challenger is a is a leftist a popular leftist because you know you could make a lot of really uh, funny satirical mm-hmm. you, you can make a fun satirical film from that as well you really could so, and i wish filmmakers were more brave to t- take a stand of making fun of both sides instead of just focusing on one uh, yeah you know especially in hollywood like they're pretty left mm-hmm. leftist, yeah, so yeah. they're gonna go after the the right a lot and you, you know yeah sure it's funny and uh, like sure i enjoy i still enjoyed this but i'll also be interested to see it from the other perspective as well because you mm-hmm. can make a lot there's a lot of material there and there, yeah. and there was a little bit already in this movie as as well with dealing with both sides but yeah it was mostly looking i didn't from, yeah i never it, felt it that sprinkled. they were making fun of the left that no, much though it was like the left actually always seemed to be the most normal ones yeah. because yeah like yeah. you had that reporter she was saying shit that made sense you had the pol- the uh the incumbent who was mm-hmm. he was everything he was saying made sense right everything he was yeah. saying was was grounded yeah. and, and wasn't being made fun of that's the big yeah. thing i right? think it's more the response from the left to the right yeah. i think if, that was more where they were commenting if anything on. it was the reporter the conspiracy reporter who's being made fun of i think he would be the closest i would actually think like the 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 show like the uh the what was that snl type cutting show? edge yeah when cutting the, the john edge cusack edge. character i like how like dealing with him and also the other people working like how can you let this guy on here and they sabotage yeah. the show and they all that. Or those are like the little sprinkle of that kind of like you know maybe i wouldn't say it's making fun of but it's more or less not just showing how the right response to all this she seen like jack black's character and all yeah. those guys you also show the other side reacting and they're also just as violent or just as aggressive yeah as well well and, i think uh, but I, I do agree with you what you're saying sorry uh yeah. with with you andrew seeing another movie but from the different perspective and yeah you are right you can get a lot of material out of that for sure yeah because he he wrote it uh he wrote it while republicans were in power yeah Yeah. so i I should should have been able to have quite a bit of material to work with Mm -hmm. but you know uh well clearly when you write these things it's a it's a personal project right so your Mm -hmm. your views uh permeate your work right so yeah You'll you'll obviously see if if you're not a big fan of Republican politics that obviously that's going to shine through. That's going to be what you focus on. Mm-hmm. It'd be kind of cool to see a movie that kind of takes on the right and the left though too. It'd be kind of cool to yeah. see. Like I think that's the way you do movie. it. Yeah, like I, I think that's the way to do it honestly because yeah. I think that you know you, like you were saying Hollywood is very left and you know obviously there's a lot of these movies that kind of like yeah. you know make fun of the right and stuff. I think the easiest way to do it is to kind of throw both in the pot mm-hmm. and kind of like show the flaws in the whole system kind of thing yeah and just i also, think that's the way to really and not do just it. show the flaws but also just show the similarities because i, feel, that like too. That's a, I yeah. feel like that's the biggest thing that most people on either side don't want to admit it how similar sure. they are no. and how like it's only like the little differences that are magnified to make them seem like they're big difference now some of them are big differences whether they're like moral justice things you know whether mm-hmm. it's like with human rights sex uh, civil rights whatever mm-hmm. like it's a lot of people tend to make politics into that instead mm-hmm. of about ideas and policies mm-hmm. and all, which is really what politics should be about. So it's yeah. all about the SJWs. Yeah, and like you have the SJWs or the alt right or whatever. It's it's <laughs> they're all just 
loud mouth yelling at each other without actually getting anything done. Mm-hmm. That's all it is, just a shouting match. At this point, yeah, just at throwing insults at each other. Yeah, and that's a, like you like who who can yell the longest and the loudest. Yeah, that's and the people who it. always get the microphone are the ones who uh who are the loudest as well, right? So even on both sides if you're looking at uh you know what what goes viral, what uh like in this day and age what goes viral, what uh, people you see uh you know their views and their actions it's it's always uh it's always the loudest the mm-hmm. more extreme people right but if you look at the voter bases on both sides and kind of the, their views could be they're obviously different but they're also very similar in terms of mm-hmm. the kind of people they are so a lot of them are are living similar lives they have similar problems they they have je- they have general things where they general views where they where they actually think the same in a lot of ways or similarly right and it's only things here or there that they that they differ a lot on but those Mm -hmm. are more like the average person but they're also not very loud about it right because they're you know focused on their own things their own lives they're low-key people most people are Mm -hmm. but then you get so caught up on these like you know what gets the the attention are these big bombastic loud extreme views on both sides to kind of like rile people up like we were saying right that's the whole point Mm -hmm. it grabs attention yeah exactly so it's it's interesting to see that for sure yeah yeah it's just like most clickbait headlines nowadays they try and say the the most outrageous things in one sentence just to get you to click on it yeah so then they make ad revenue from that and then they might reveal way 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 down on the page what it's really all about and you realize well i just i got duped again yeah and that's basically what politics is in this day and age getting duped over and over and over again and yeah. when are we going to learn as a people especially living here in the west where this is supposedly the free world and we've got and now i'm talking about the united states being in canada uh, they have two major political parties there here we have I want to say we have three, but it's really down to two, and the third one is kind of eh, yeah, off yeah. to the side. But then again, the third one will occasionally surprise you. Yeah, like so, it did in uh, when when Jack Layton was still alive. It, yep. They were the official opposition. They beat out the liberals, which are the uh, like the Democrats. Let's mm-hmm. say y'all yeah. talking about the pirate party. Yeah. The pirate party. Yeah, yeah pirate party. Right? There was no, the sex here, party here, and the I weed would say party. Oh yeah, the, here yeah, I'd say the tea a, party. There's a there's an essential difference here. That kind of creates a, a different dynamic here for voting, just because uh, over there it's uh, uh, there's that there's the idea that okay, hey, there's four years, possibly eight, but you always yeah. know that eight's the end, eight's yeah. the limit, yeah. and that at least at that point it won't it won't be the same people, it won't be the same guy. He's uh, that person is gone, so it's always kind of this uh, swinging back and forth between these two parties, right? Whereas here. Uh, there is no limit. There's no limit. Yeah. You can go on for as long as you will get elected for. Uh, so uh, I, because I think of the last election and the way that uh, Canadians had to vote in the last election, the big narrative was stop Harper. It was yeah. the big thing was stop who the guy who was in power for so long. Um, almost 10 years. It's it about 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he in power for almost 10 years, which never happens in the United States because eight right. is the maximum. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, 10 years and it became to the point where people actually got behind. They didn't get behind the idea of uh, a personality or one person. They did. I guess there was, you know, Trudeau was yeah, yeah, yeah. a pretty charismatic guy, but uh, it was less that. And it, the big narrative, the things that I would see everywhere uh, pre-election during all that uh, during all campaigning and things like that w- the narrative wasn't really hey this guy or hey uh, you know this this party it was stop Harper stop it was Harper anyone it was but anybody Harper. but Harper exactly. whoever you can yeah. vote for that will uh, you know strategic voting became a big thing I've mentioned this before yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it was all about just stopping this one guy. Yeah. So it is different here than there just because of that. Because that would never happen in the States. It wouldn't be stop this guy. Like maybe for the re-election. But it's always it's always going to be about uh, uh, the popularity contest. Just because there's that eight-year limit. 
Yeah, I was gonna say the re-election is the big thing because I think I think you're gonna have I think you're gonna have a little bit of that of the stop Trump. You will, you, you know, will. You're gonna well, see that for is, sure. It already is that with the midterms about yeah. voting out and making sure Republicans given yeah, the yeah, Senate yeah. the Democrats more. Uh, I don't know power people the Senate, but people are always focusing on like oh impeachment and this and that. Well, yeah, but I mean which... they kind of do that for either side. You hear that all the time. You yeah. hear that from the opposition pretty much every. Any little Every thing election, they'll, so. they'll latch on to as a way to this sh- yeah. get rid of Americans them. talk about impeachment a surprising amount. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't think that uh, you don't hear that here very often. No, no. You don't hear about like, hey, we're going to try and get our prime minister out of office. Like a, Not no usually. vote of confidence or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, we don't, we don't quite get that very often. Um, no. You have people who are not happy and sure. like, yeah. you have opposition <sighs> for sure. A lot of it. Um, but you don't get that. Yeah. You don't get it as much as in America where every single election, it's like, there's, there's a, a decent amount. There's a contingent that wants to impeach the pres that current president, whether well, it's left or right. Well, cause the opposition builds up the, whoever they're well, it's like sore is. losers at a certain yeah, point just, where it's like, like they're just, the, just everyone. I, that, unfortunately you have to deal with it. Yeah. That's what democracy is about. Pretty, is, as you were saying, is like dealing with, compromising unfortunately yeah. well when you have like the other side or, or either side what whenever like whether it's a republican or a democrat or whoever whether in canada it's a liberal conservative or ndp whoever's in charge the opposite always makes whoever's in charge to be like they're the worst thing ever hmm, you yeah. know like when obama was in office fox news is this the worst president of all time oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah this is the worst. and now flip side trump is the worst thing i miss bush yeah and you know you're just like yeah oh. i i seriously don't get the whole people bush is suddenly all like uh george w but yeah. yeah like in like a like a nicer light like he's yeah. getting he's like, having like a like he's his, got rose-colored glasses now everybody's yeah. looking at him as he's he's cool now when yeah, the it's fuck crazy. did that happen <laughs> yep it, it's a ma- like people it's, have very yeah. short memory. Yeah, yeah. Start yeah. very. For the good old oh, days. Yeah. shit. Because like, he's yeah. funny now, and he's actually saying shit, and people are like, "Preach!" And it's like, "Wait, yeah, okay, you're agreeing with what he says, what he's saying right there." But like, do you, do you remember? Remember? <laughs> do you remember how much? It wasn't that long ago. He is, like <laughs> he still had the lowest uh, uh, approval rating ever for when they left for a president. Like Trump for an has, exiting, yeah. Trump president. hasn't yeah. reached Bush levels. Well, he's yet. not. He's yeah. he's got time. He ain't there. He's, yet. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's not there, there yet. yet. But still, I have like, a feeling. Uh, I have a feeling I, that he he might break, break the record. record. Yeah, uh, um, if he reaches that long. Yeah, I, I have a feel. I I I think he'll he'll make it there. To be honest. Oh yeah, me too. Um, yeah. I, I don't think it's gonna. It's not gonna reach short. an impeach. I don't yeah. think. I don't think it's gonna impeach. I think that's 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 speculation. But I I think it's a it's pretty confident speculation. But uh, no, I think, yeah, no, he could break that record. But again, people think like Bush is so cool now, which is hilarious to, to oh, watch yeah. because this it's the same people who were who were so passionate and against him. And now they're like, George, yeah, the Bush makes sense now. Like uh, he's saying things. Yeah, I agree with what well, he's saying all now. Because they're only listening just to because he's a- saying things that are anti-Bush, against yeah. anti anti Trump. Sorry, anti Trump. Sorry, yeah, yeah. anti Bush. Yeah, anti Bush. Yeah. I mean, uh, he is kind of the antithesis of himself now. I mean, he's he's kind of become the opposite of himself now currently, yeah. right? What what they and I think that's why people are yeah. kind of latching on to that. I feel like a lot of people, especially on the left, who are making those, you know. On those claims are really just saying like we we want somebody who is not a loud mouth idiot even though bush was a <laughs> but loud he was a loud idiot. yeah like but, and they, they, they just forget, forget they forget that and that's he was just one that that had a slightly better vocabulary i wouldn't go that far bush, no no bush, bushisms no no are you bush sure like though it almost like are you sure yeah. have you seen those tweets though like I, have you read those tweets have you have you have you actually no 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 have you actually read a transcript yeah. from what he said from like, what Trump said have you seen said. the text yes, I have. version I have. of what he said verbally I've not been able to bring myself yeah so it's it's, it's fucking amazing like nobody speaks perfectly when you write when you try to write down to transcribe what somebody is saying it comes out not so great it comes out not quite as coherent uh it'll be it, it won't be as good as if it's yeah. written down. But for him, both ways, whether it's a tweet, it's all written down. 
So it's not dictated. It's written down probably. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then when you also see it written down, transcribed, then uh, it's, it's, Oh, it's even worse. So yeah, if you compare that to a transcribed version of what Bush was saying, I, I got you know I'm not gonna like sing the praises of Bush, but like it is better. <laughs> it is better. At least Bush attempted to make himself sound smarter. He it's, was coherent. Yeah, at least he, he was barely coherent. Yeah, putting food on your family. Yeah, yeah. at least he also had. A yeah, well, sense at least like humor. it was occasional <laughs> stupid, right? Yeah. It was like an occasional stupid thing here or there where you were like, what? You know, where did it, what did he say? But whereas with Trump, I, I feel like you can't follow what he's saying. It's it's hard to even follow what he's trying yeah, to say. He jumps he into a different into, sentence. Yeah, he he's constantly jumping between topics within the same sentence, and just it's it's so hard to follow. It's so hard to follow what he's saying. Well, he yeah. doesn't know what he's saying. Yeah, he it's just because knows he's got to talk for forty five yeah, seconds. It's basically and, a run on sentence from like an elementary school kid Mm -hmm. where they are randomly having new thoughts during their sentence (laughs) and and spouting them out. And where's the period? Yeah. 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 Like you don't have a thought and then think I should stick to this topic and not change topics before I stop speaking, right? Stop speaking. Then I can change topics and then repeat the same word over and over again until you grill it into your head. Just like, well, it's, uh, he's innocent. And I just have to say he's innocent He's innocent. Did I mention he's innocent? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Like he'll just grill and gr- Yeah. Just, repetition yeah. works during a campaign. Yeah. It doesn't quite yeah. work uh, for well, while you're trying to actually, when, when people are listening yeah. intently and trying to actually derive something from it. Right. It's, whereas uh, when it's a popularity contest, yeah, repetition yeah. works great. There's a great video by a nerd writer uh, who did a whole video breaking down about like how he speaks and just like yeah I've seen those and it's yeah. really it's really fascinating just kind of like there is a little bit of there's something there in the madness a little bit but it's still mm-hmm. madness you know sure. you, like you you yourself know like this is just not nonsensical garble and then <laughs> but when you break it down you can sort of understand why people who do understand him can at least you can kind of get in their perspective, I guess it's, it's, yeah. it's a, the whole thing is just fascinating. That's the whole thing about what's it's, going it's, on. It's, it's so actually f- really fascinating. Yeah. yeah. I remember after the election, so many people were convinced that he's a mastermind and they were coming up with all these really, uh, <laughs> yeah, and they were believable right. too. these theories that, I remember that, that, you know, uh, no, this, this could be a master plan or this could be, uh, they, they had these, these really, they're like fan theories. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're not maybe they, the opposite of that actually, cause they weren't typically yeah. fans. So they had these theories, right. Yeah. And they were really complicated theories or ones that, that even I looked at and went, that could be the case technically. Yeah. And that's scary. Uh, but then you, that you don't quite get those much anymore. Just because people are starting to realize, no, probably not. Yeah. No, um, no, that's that's probably not the case. No, but we've been scammed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's it's just funny to look at that the these uh, conspiracy theories, and then now they're they're kind of not they're not around anymore. Like yeah. people don't really think that much anymore. I also think that uh, I don't know if Trump has the the shoe dodging skills that uh, that Bush oh, has. Yeah. No way! <laughs> oh yeah, man, he's dodging that. But I've seen how he reacts to when someone attempts to get on the stage, and it's honestly oh, one yeah. of the funniest things you could. But watch. he has a lot of like viral moments that are like hilarious in the same way, right? Sure. Like like uh, seen his hair like pushing out. Who do you push out of a photo? Oh, in, the like, French a, president. The French. Oh president. right, yeah, that's yeah. what it was. <laughs> Yeah, that was yeah, pretty funny. Yeah, my way. I gotta go in front of the line. <laughs> and just how, yeah, just a lot of his facial. Sp- oh, the hair recently. Yeah, the yeah. hair recently. That was a good one. Yeah, we're just. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah. Yeah, it's really great. Um, yeah, I'm just those look- parts are great. I'm just uh, looking forward to the time, like 20 years from now, that they're gonna look back like, man, man, remember Trump? <laughs> man, I wish we had him back in the office. <laughs> oh, like, don't say that. Oh, it's, no. it's good. I'm that's, just like, that's a depressing future. <laughs> Every time Alex brings a movie in, we get so political. So <laughs> is it going to be President Camacho in 20 years? 
man. Oh. <laughs> a future in which we're nostalgic for Trump as president is not a future in which I wish to be a part well, of. Like, people <laughs> are nostalgic for Bush already, so that yeah, shows you where we're going yeah. as uh, yeah, a people. That's an uncomfortable trend. Maybe when, maybe when Kanye's president, we'll miss Trump. Oh, man. Oh, no, I'm all about Kanye. Yeah. There you go. Didn't he did say he was going to run for office? No, no, no. He point? said he was going to, and then he dropped uh, it. Well, of could, course. Could Kanye yeah. even run for, uh, like with a particular political party? Like, could he even possibly consider be considered left, right, or center? Yeah, left, do you know what? Like, left. he's yeah. probably like upside down. He form his own. His... Party. He, he would form his own party, the Fish and his, Sticks Party. And his so. his uh, his um, his slogans would be, "I'm a genius." I'm a lyrical I'm, wordsmith. I'm a lyrical yeah. Genius. No, yeah. he's a god. Voice Did of a you generation. Not listen to what oh, he's been I saying. I am a god. He is god. Yeah. <laughs> he's Jesus. He's Jesus. Yeah. He's Jesus. Yeah. He's Jesus and God. I thought he was he a is gay a fish. god and Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> he was a gay fish. I already That's said like he, he would name this party Fish Dicks Party. So. <laughs> 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 my god yeah you know the rock I, I like that oprah actually came out and said no some sensical stuff <laughs> of like i'm not a politician i don't want to be this isn't like yeah and that, and that I, i'm just uh, popular <laughs> the rock apparently registered though <laughs> yeah I he's, know a, he's, it, he's it, still me, on like, the board when you see like all the people like on the left who are just like oprah like, we oprah, want we want oprah. our celebrity like, now like, like did you yeah. not learn yeah, you like, don't vote for up, somebody don't. without any political like experience. Like, why don't you Come just on. vote for another like Obama esque president? Like, just go for something like that. At least yeah. that makes fucking sense. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. Like, no, now it's all about shit. celebrities. Now, now you get the Rock in. Like he does. Yeah, Rock Exa- versus Trump. Exactly. It's as he, as you're saying. It's a popularity. Like contest. if if you yeah. just all it oh it is now it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, like oh my god. It's like what's the point now? It's like yeah, that's it's what, just popularity it, versus like what you actually want, you know? Pretty yeah. much. That's right. People see a figurehead and they're like, "Cool." Yeah, it was Reagan, mm-hmm. then Schwarzenegger in yeah, California. For California. Yeah, California. Actually, before yeah. Schwarzenegger it was Jesse Ventura. Um, you know what? Jesse Ventura <laughs> did a pretty good job in yeah. Minnesota. No, no, from no, no what I'm not I saying. Heard. I'm just saying celebrity. Who, yeah. I think didn't a lot of people in uh, also think that about Schwarzenegger though. Like weren't they Some weren't they did. championing him like uh, saying oh he's actually doing a pretty good job yeah they actually did say that and yeah. James Cameron even was like yeah he was very politically minded you know when we shot Terminator movies yeah and hmm. stuff yeah and, like people yeah, are just, so. like making all the governator jokes but it's you know, pretty good at, yeah which was great but then you know you keep you never you didn't hear that many that much negative press about his actual nope. the job he was doing you, you, mm. obviously there's always negative press but it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't that bad. It yeah, wasn't it was like a positive. Reagan. You yeah. know, it wasn't as significant as like a Reagan or a Trump, where it's huge, where the it's a much bigger difference. It's also, it's also they're also president versus governor, a very yeah. different power dynamic. But you know, I don't know. It's just mm. I've uh, I heard yeah I don't know I, don't I heard pretty good here. things. I heard yeah. some. The only thing I heard about, good things. Yeah, the only thing about him that I heard that was bad was well no, negative was that scandal with his. Uh, uh, cleaning lady, and he, oh. and but that was way after. No, there was that that came, that broke like two months before he left office or something. Really? Yeah. Wow. And, and like he divorced his wife at that point too. Mary, I can't remember her name. Uh, Maria Shriver. Yeah, Maria Shriver. Yeah. Um. So all that was happening just as he was leaving. Oh, so sure. it was like wow. timing wise. Um. But yeah, no, I didn't hear too much in terms of like scandals or anything like that. Yeah. I, I just heard you just. Did a serve, did a okay job. Yeah, that was it. Mm-hmm. which is like, that's I mean, cool. that's actually fairly high praise for somebody in office. To say <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> who wasn't in office before, who had no political yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah all to, right, to all say right. like, yeah, they did, they did an okay job. And they did a being pr- a familiar pretty good public job. figure already is undoubtedly a great deal. Of that scrutiny. helped, yeah, yeah, especially especially for him, especially in California, mm. which is probably why he ran there. Right, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah, for like, because he ran as a Republican, and California is very much a Democratic state. So for him to get two terms out of that was, mm-hmm. was pretty good. Yeah, I think people just liked him. Yeah, yep, he's a likable guy. But then again, I think he had the help of Carl Rove, Bush's brain. When Everyone he was had help with Carl Rove <laughs> at, at that point in time, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Has anyone ever seen W? Like the Oliver Stone movie? W. I haven't, I haven't seen, seen it. Seen no. It. I saw that. Uh, I actually enjoyed it. It was, uh, but it, it kind of give puts uh, again showing the the almost kind of like with this movie showing like building up Bush and you know seeing like him in his college days and then him with Karl Rove and all the other characters sort of like you know 
what to say and how to mm-hmm. make him be the ideal candidate and how to beat McCain because that was his main primary opponent. And then it showed him in office, you know, dealing with all his cabinet ministers and all that. So really interesting movie. It actually takes a, a, a very objective view on Bush, wow. particularly from an Oliver Stone movie. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oliver Which Stone's is, quite left. It's very it? interesting how he, he, this was almost like the first thing to come out that kind of humanized Bush in a sense, mm. especially mm-hmm. how it came out just again he was still in office this was this came out during the obama uh election so he was still bush was still very much in the public eye and all that before like this movie were to come out now i feel like it would get a lot more attention and positive praise sure uh than it did when it came back so everyone's like oh wait a minute like we all hate bush but yet you're not on this, the hate train. Yeah, this movie is yeah. like is almost kind of feel bad. His dad's a bit of a jerk. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. I feel um, like I feel like if you, yeah, I, I feel like if you, uh, if you focus in too much on, uh, if you uh, in in a film where you're focusing in on a certain character or a certain real life person, you kind of have to take the the sympathetic view of them just just because they're the focus, right? If you're, yeah. you're going from their perspective, everybody's the hero of their story. So you have to portray it that way, like from their perspective, but obviously you show it, you don't filter out the bad stuff mm-hmm. so that audiences can judge for themselves. They look at it. Like I, Tanya is a good example of something I saw recently where it's like, you can see the bad things for yourself yeah. and mm-hmm. make your own judgments because you're like, well, that's shitty. Mm -hmm. Or I think that's shitty. But at the same time, you're obviously getting their perspective because because it's their movie, right? Or it's it's focusing in on them. The point isn't to to show what everybody else is showing in the news. The point is to show a personal view. You're telling a story. Yeah, you're telling their story. And their story is obviously going to be sympathetic to them. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's that's an important thing. So I think if you're right or if you're left, you just can't do that. You mm-hmm. have to have you have to you have to have a sympathetic brush when you're making your, yeah. your biopic, right? Yeah, and it, and I I appreciate I appreciated when I did see that movie at the time like that they did take that approach that it wasn't just a fuck bush type of movie. You know, cuz he JFK had done uh sorry, um, Oliver Stone, he had done JFK and then uh a couple years after that he did uh Nixon. Nixon. Um where it was when you look at the movie Nixon, it doesn't like hold any punches there. It really shows the man being an asshole, being yeah. you know what he did good, what he did really bad yep. with all Watergate and all that. So, and then when W comes out, it's a little bit more. It's not as aggressive, not as hard hitting. So I guess that's why the audiences were a little taken aback at first. Hmm. But yeah, if it were to come out now, I think if you compare them, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's it's not even close. Yeah, like Nixon kind of earns yeah for it, sure. it kind of earns the the yeah being harsh right just yeah. because i mean it would be a little harder to to be to to make him sympathetic yeah oh yeah than it is for bush mm-hmm. so uh, yeah I, I yeah for sure like between watergate and other scandals it's it's a little yeah it's a little tough to 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 sympathize with him but yeah i mean yeah, I, I just think you got to take that perspective every time, though. That's just my opinion. For sure. That's just my opinion, man. It's all of our... That's, ju- like, that, my opinion. Yeah, it's all we have is just opinions. <laughs> yeah, opinions can't be wrong, okay? So you, you can take your facts and shove them up your fucking ass because this is my opinion. Just make sure you wear your goggles first. Everything's, like, fake news unless I say it's right, and you're all Nazis, okay? So, there. So I'm going to shut down this little whitey circle jerk that we've all been having here. And we're going to bid you all adieu. But before we do, we'll get a final perspective from everyone. Kind of like a a second cum shot if you can do that. And so we're going to... It, but it's got to be really quick. It's got to be like two or three sentences because we like got to go. I got to get to my Antifa defense class <laughs> where we're going to do like yoga mixed with karate. And then we're going to meet up at the local Starbucks after. So, Jack, you're going to tell us um, why this was your film. 
Oh, this is my, okay. <laughs> yeah. This is my phone. Okay. <laughs> why did you make this? Yeah. yeah. Why, why did I decide to make this? Yeah, I was one years old when this came when this came out. So Pretty impressive. I, yeah, I, I got to say, it's, it went all downhill from there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I peaked at one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> help me. Um, yeah. Overall, yeah, I, I was I'm I was happy to see this movie. It's kind of seen. I like seeing you know these different political movies at the time and then being reminded nothing's changed um just, just like talk radio pretty much oh, yeah. it just it's 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 amazing and also just again going off of how people just have such short attention spans or short-term memories like how they can't remember any, any of this shit it's like haven't we gone through this before nah it's mm-hmm. like oh good but um yeah besides my my uh, my obvious i feel i'm probably the only one who has said this my my gripes with uh, just how it was constructed and the structure of it and the pacing of it i felt wasn't consistent enough for me for to be a true mockumentary but when it clicked it really worked um i thought yeah the the, when the humor hit it was really good it was really uh the acting was great uh the performances um characters were all memorable i think the songs were all great um and yeah no it was a it was a good movie with just some some uh, structural issues but overall uh, i enjoyed it okay rylan i had a blast with this movie uh i i mean obviously it's a parody it's wacky but it has this kind of understated quality to it that mm-hmm. almost gives it a, a pretty in my opinion pretty honest look about the popularity nature of of politics in in this century and last century um i mean yeah so you could take take out of this the the uh importance of of looking at things objectively especially when it comes to politics um seeking out other sources of information rather than just allowing what's being spoon-fed to you uh avoid your confirmation biases because sometimes what you don't want to hear is exactly what you need to hear and accept that real change will only come when we accept that we need to be the ones to make it happen amen fart man Politics is shitty. They just blow. (laughs) (laughs) If y'all, if just not laughing, just makes it all better. Andrew's face right now, you would be laughing with us, folks. Yeah. Okay. Before you go on, Zach, there's a video on YouTube. It's like 20 seconds long. It's this guy who created the world's largest whoopee cushion. And that's exactly what it it says. He's like, I've created the world's largest whoopee cushion. And he falls on it and it starts going. And then the camera pans over to this cat that's on the floor right (laughs) near the whoopee cushion. And it's like. And that's exactly what Andrew looks like right now. It's fucking hilarious. I'd be more entertained by the whoopee cushion. I'm looking up this video. It's it's pretty great. I've actually seen it. Um, Yeah, no, I I mean, I like the comparison, Alex, that you made early on about how, not the comparison, but the analogy that this is um, kind of like a world where Bob Dylan never existed. And so this guy comes in and he's like this big popular celebrity and it's this big craze that he started. So he starts his political campaign he's got these big disciples and it's you know it's it's it does reflect a little bit of like the current you know presidential state but even with trump and things uh with him um you know having like a little bit of a following he didn't have like that much of a following so it'd be pretty crazy to see if there was somebody on like a bob dylan kind of you know level with like fans that fanatic if like that ever happened like what that would be like you know kind of on that level would be pretty crazy but other than that, I mean, in terms of the film itself, uh, you know, it's a pretty crazy ride. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's got twists, it's got different turns, things like that that are pretty cool in terms of like its uh, its tone for sure. It's uh, it's very funny. It's makes you think at times about different things. I really like the songs. Like mm-hmm. when you were kind of like when you kind of listen to the lyrics and things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty fucking funny too. <laughs> Drugs, um, uh, drug stink. Or... Drug yeah, stink. No, my, and, um, uh... my favorite was in, I think, believe it was in the, uh, in the drug song. It said, hang him high for a clean living land. <laughs> 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 I was like, 
And there was oh, one about wait. like about like the homeless like need to stop being lazy and get a job. Yeah. <laughs> and stuff. There's and that one too. And complain and complain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that one too. That was good. It, yeah, just those just like, oh, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. They're all bitching about the same shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. But uh, yeah, it was neat. And I, I wasn't expecting it to be a, a mockumentary. Like, again, I just knew, you know, kind of who it was written and directed by and that was pretty much it. And just like the cast and things, but I didn't know much about it. So it was a pleasant surprise. Um, something very different from what we, again we've had on, you know, the show so far, and uh, yeah, got my dick card. <laughs> dicks and up, dicks up, poop down. <laughs> 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 and just, <laughs> just a quick fact about the songs: all the songs in the film were written by Tim Robbins and his brother Dave. Yeah, and. Tim and Dave are the sons of folk singer Gil Robbins, who was part of the Highwaymen. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. So, Andrew, final feels? Final feels. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't know anything about this movie. I thought that it it handled its, um, its, sat, its satirical elements pretty well. I thought that it was... F- funny uh i wasn't expecting the mockumentary until you mentioned it like hey what is this and then you kind of kind of said oh it's like a mockumentary style that's mm-hmm. what it's going for yeah i was like okay okay so i i wasn't expecting that uh, ended up being a pleasant surprise for me too i uh i i like the way that it uh, it handled its subject matter and that it's again i i enjoyed the fact that it's relevancy to today and to the past as well. Yeah. It's uh, I think it kind of makes it timeless because like I said, I don't think it'll ever end. I think mm-hmm. you'll see similar things pop up on a, on a continuous basis back and forth. So I think it'll continue to be relevant, unfortunately, but I think it will. So it's, it's one of those movies where I, I in order f- the, the best way to deal with problems like this or, or a difficult subject matter a lot of the times is to poke fun at it and making making fun of it is a coping mechanism a yeah. way that to deal with actually difficult issues so I, it does at certain points make statements like uh, like we've said before but uh, I think it, it does stick to its format of being kind of mocking the the political system more than than oh constant trying to make statements it it's more it's more of a satire yeah. uh so i i i i really enjoyed it i i had a great time i i do think it's underrated because i'd never heard of it i'd heard of more of uh uh like um hardcore logo or um uh you guys spinal tap it, spinal tap that mm-hmm. perfect uh you know i've heard of those ones but i never heard of this one so I didn't even know it existed. So yeah, definitely underrated. I, I think it's definitely worth a watch. The songs are really good. Like Zach was saying, like you've all been saying, they're really well done. If you like Bob Dylan, you'll actually kind of dig the tunes. They're actually f- fun to listen to because they are that folk Bob Dylan style track mm-hmm. and the lyrics are hilarious. So you get something a little extra out of it because they're not, uh, they're good lyrics in the sense that they're written comedically. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I, and just good little touches. Like, yeah, you're saying the ad. I loved the, the <laughs> tiny things in that attack yeah. ad, especially the attack ad was the one I was laugh, yeah, like, yeah. Just laughing at. I, yeah, I think the comedy hits really well in this. And mm-hmm. I think that the message is, is good too. I didn't dislike it in any way. I, I thought, yeah, you know, that's a, that's a, a good message at the end of the day. It's not a shitty message. Right. So, and it's not depressing, which is also nice. Because uh, a lot of times when you bring in political movies, Alex, I get a little depressed. Oh. So, you know, it's nice to have a, a message that doesn't depress me. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's uh, definitely underrated. Check it out. Alex, once again, you brought a movie I liked. I'm starting to see some kind of a pattern here. Okay. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> World's smallest violin playing for you right now. Andrew's gonna be like, I gotta put up with this shit every week now. Yeah, it's like 
That's depressing. This is depressing. <laughs> this is actually depressing. <laughs> you know wh- why is fart? Why does fart humor make a resurgence? You know why is it making Gotta a bring resurgence? It. The times it's, they're dude, changing it's never back. Never left. <laughs> no, there was a time where potty humor was not cool. You no, know, it was potty where hu- people no, were pot- saying no. like Nickelodeon was all fart humor and shit and it wasn't funny it de- it depends it comes back because someone does something different with it or does just the timing of it like the one that i always be like yeah potty humor and then i'll see kenny versus benny who can blow the biggest fart and i'm losing it oh yeah <laughs> like yeah and then you watch jackass or something with the yeah helmet yeah. And, yeah and then yeah. you're just grossed out at yeah that. <laughs> see see i thought we were past this but then no. zach brings that and it just kills us yeah <laughs> you know it reminds me of just how how it that that's depressing that makes the fact that you're all laughing at that now that makes me depressed okay but there's a reason for it because i'm not into that kind of humor either like back when i was seven or eight years old yeah i was all about that yeah now i could i could care i couldn't care less about it but oh excuse me but the thing is when you watch a film like this and it can get pretty heavy and serious yeah sometimes you need a quote-unquote release like that i stole one of your i love it i love it but you know what you're absolutely right i mean you kind of need a bringer upper you know something to bring your hopes (laughs) that's kind of of a bringer outer yeah (laughs) bring her outer what depends on which direction you're doing you need to let out you need to to let out the air a little bit some some comic relief yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm wrapping it up. This was episode 19, the Bob Roberts edition. I'm some jerk off named Alex. Don't forget to send me hate mail and f- stuff that's not exactly related to Bob Roberts, but was around close to the time. There's a documentary called The Panama Deception, dealt with the U.S. going into Panama, 1989. Uh, research Gary Webb, his series on Dark Alliance for the San Jose Mercury News that he released in 1996. There is there is the 2004 version of The Manchurian Candidate. Please watch that if you can. That's a good movie. Denzel. And do a little bit, bit of research into CIA drug smuggling in MENA, Arkansas. That's M-E-N-A, Arkansas. Bill Clinton was governor of Arkansas at the time that this... This shit in Mina went down, so please look into that as well. I'm Alex, along with Jack, Zach, Rylan, and Andrew. This has been the You Missed It podcast. We will be back next week with Rylan's pick for a film, and I'm not going to spoil anything more about it, but take care. And as a famous Canadian once said, take care now. Bye-bye then. (laughs) 